process when it's in contact with um, moisture and then carbon dioxide forms a precipitate. So it can essentially go through this chemical reaction to constantly capture this carbon dioxide um, as they're exhaling it inside of those spacesuits. And they're a little bit different from the uh, systems that we use on board the space station, which are uh, essentially running around the clock um, and have more of a, a active regenerative process. One a GMT uh, at 1210, and for Josh's TCB, it's now at 44. Copy all. And we're continuing to get some good some good call outs that we're getting closer to having the crew move into the crew lock section. They're in equipment lock right now, but they'll be moving over to the crew lock session section shortly. That's where we'll close the hatch uh, and use a series of pumps and valves to bring that down to vacuum. Uh, one final note, so that Medox that's able to, to capture that carbon, that's the Medox canisters, like all of the life support, are located in that backpack section. Uh, on the spacesuits that you see the astronauts wearing. It actively captures that carbon dioxide over time. Eventually it will get saturated though, so that's why it's considered a consumable. Um, you'll often hear the uh, term limiting consumable used um, whenever we're going through a spacewalk and you essentially have uh, three that you're really looking at. Um, we're tracking how much oxygen, how much O2 is inside the spacesuit, how much carbon dioxide capture we have remaining, that's your, your Medox, um, and then power uh, is these suits once they're completely unplugged or running on batteries. Um, you also have a limited amount of water that's used inside uh, for all of the cooling um, and a couple of other fluid systems inside. So that Medox is typically the limiting consumable um, and that just means if we, if we looked at which one we're going to run out of first, that's your limiting consumable. And so we'll keep a close eye, and you'll you'll typically hear throughout the spacewalk um, and a target duration, or you know, we're looking at you know seven hours with Medox limiting. You'll you'll hear those call out to, up to the crew as they're just giving them a gradual status. So that's what when you hear Medox, that's what it's referring to. Meanwhile, the crew is just finishing up their pre-breathe. Um, so it takes a couple of hours just to get ready for a spacewalk. So before they even get into these suits, um, we have to go through a couple of steps just to make sure that we're keeping them safe as they're moving into essentially a depressurized environment. So on board the space station, just like if you're walking around here at sea level, the atmospheric pressure inside is about 14.7 PSI. And when they're outside in the vacuum of space though, those spacesuits are pressurized, but not to 14.7 PSI. If we were to pressurize the spacesuit that much, it'd be almost impossible to move. It'd be like fighting against a really stiff balloon, essentially. It'd be really hard to manipulate fingers, move arms, things like that. And so uh, what we're able to do is have them operate in a lower pressure setting. Those spacesuits go to about 4.3 PSI once we see them Uh, once we see them uh, out of the vacuum of space. Uh, so 4.3, that's a lot easier to move around. It's still pretty intensive to use your hands in that spacesuit as you are just constantly fighting against that pressure. Uh, but as they're at a lower pressure, they're also breathing a 100% oxygen atmosphere, essentially, when they're in those suits. That way you can operate at a lower pressure, but you're still getting the, the oxygen that you need. And we operate on a lot of the same restrictions uh, as anybody who's ever gone scuba diving. As you go deeper and deeper into the water, you're in a higher and higher pressure environment. And then as you come back to the surface, um, you need to take your time as you do it. Um, or you can suffer what's known as decompression sickness. And all that really is will be different gases. The primary one we look for is nitrogen. Uh, when it's in your blood and in tissues in your body, it's at kind of an ambient pressure or it's at an equal pressure with your ambient surroundings. But if you start to depressurize quickly, 
the pressure in those gases in your in your veins in your tissues will be higher than the pressure around it and that can form bubbles and if those bubbles start to form they can cause problems one of the most common ones is is it starting to happen is you'll start to get joint pain things like that um, but it can eventually cause some pretty serious issues with your nervous system um, and so that's why we have to be very careful very deliberate and to prepare them for that lower pressure environment we do what's called a pre-breathe um, a long time ago we used to have the astronauts actually camp out sleep in the airlock overnight at a lower pressure um, of around 10 psi uh, breathing an increased oxygen atmosphere and that would help just kind of gradually purge that excess nitrogen from the blood uh, but as the teams have gotten more and more experience they were able to develop a new process called in suit light exercise and in this case the crew uh, as their morning begins they go inside the airlock and they are at that reduced pressure of about 10 psi and they're breathing pure oxygen that starts to help um, essentially reject that nitrogen out of the system uh, but you're doing it in a very gradual fashion and then after they've done that for a few hours they get suited up inside of these spacesuits um, and then they start doing what's known as in-suit light exercise so they're past at this point so we won't see it but they essentially sit there uh, attached to the wall still moving arms moving moving legs and they they do it at kind of timed intervals uh, and this is just to again consistently reject that nitrogen get that out of the system um, as we get ready to have them operate in that pure oxygen environment and so that's all done uh, we're now in the steps getting ready for depress the team here in mission control is actually about to do a go no go for depress a depress just referring to depressurization uh, that's us taking them into the crew lock section, closing the hatch, and then removing all of the atmosphere in there and bringing it down to a vacuum. Um, so again, a vacuum is just an absence of stuff, in this case, an absence of atmosphere, and we need to get the crew lock section down as close to vacuum as possible before they open up the hatch and move out into the vacuum of space. So uh, the team here in Mission Control is going to do a go, no go right now as we get closer to this go for depress and so before we get there though we see Koichi Wakata continuing to work he's on Frank Rubio's spacesuit right now you saw them attach uh, something to the bottom of that backpack that life support system and that is the safer device simplified aid for EVA rescue and essentially functions as a small jetpack um, it's not anything we use for actual maneuvering when we're outside on station uh, but it is just another step in the line of defense of keeping an astronaut attached to the station. Um, they'll use a series of tethers. A lot of the communication you're going to hear throughout the spacewalk today is them assessing where their tethers are located. They practice all of these where they're going to put tethers for the different handrails, but essentially that keeps them attached physically to the station at all times throughout a spacewalk. Should they become untethered, they can use that safer device um, to then fly back to the space station. So that's just an extra layer of safety uh, for these spacewalking astronauts. Okay. For the EV-1 for Frank, TCV is at position 4. Houston copies. But Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann working right now to get the safer on to Frank Rubio, who again, he's going to be EV-1, our lead spacewalker for today. Uh, one of the primary jobs of the lead spacewalker is going to be doing all the hatch operations once we're in the airlock, so both opening the hatch and closing it when we're at the very end. So they'll get the safer device on his spacesuit and then move over to get the safer device onto uh, Josh Cassidy's. And after that, we'll be ready to start stepping into the actual depressurization phase of our spacewalk. So they'll move uh, both crew members who have all of the tools uh, that they're going to need, and we'll go over those tools as they're using them throughout the spacewalk today. 
Uh, and they also have uh, on the front of the spacesuits essentially a mini workstation with a lot of those tools, tethers, other things that they'll need. Uh, they'll also have a small bag uh, that they're going to bring out that has the cables that we're going to be using to integrate that newly installed solar array into the 4A power channel along with the existing one. So we're going to see them bring all of that into the airlock. Um, and then Koichi and Nicole will work to get the hatch closed between the two different sections of the Quest airlock. We have the equipment lock. That's where they are right now. That's where we store the spacesuits, all the different spacewalking gear when it's not in use. And then we have the crew lock section. And so that's where we're going to see Frank start moving to next. Uh, and that is what actually gets brought down to vacuum. Uh, you're also going to see their suits. You can see one going into the crew lock, uh, the, kind of the large white hoses. Um, those are known as the SCMs, the service or SEU service and cooling umbilicals. So their spacesuits are essentially hard line to space station systems right now, giving them communications, power, um, fluids for cooling, all of that. And um, we don't unplug those until we're about to essentially start the EVA. The operations teams consider as they switch their suits to battery power. So after they're unplugged and on battery power, that'll be the official start of our spacewalk. And that doesn't happen until we've brought that crew lock section all the way down to vacuum. And so we see Frank Rubio now over in the crew lock section, helped by Koichi Wakata. And next up, we're going to get Josh Cassida off of the mount there on the wall, get his safer attached, and then move him into the crew lock section to join with Frank. All right, and now we see Kuich Wakata bringing in the safer device that's going to get attached to Josh Cassida's suit. Now we're going to see these two go out of the airlock, and then they're going to kind of go their separate ways at first before meeting back up for the install. So Josh Cassida is going to be getting into the APFR, the Articulating Portable Foot Restraint, on the uh, Space Station's robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2. And back inside uh, of the station. Uh, Nicole Mann's going to be uh, what's called um, the M1. She's going to be the primary robotics uh, controller, essentially, for this spacewalk. And she's going to be literally flying uh, Cassida as he's at the tip of that arm to the different work sites. And so they'll uh, Cassida and Rubio are going to meet back up over at the FSE, the Flight Support Equipment. That's the, the temporary stow location right now for the uh, last IROSA array that just arrived uh, on a SpaceX Cargo Dragon. And they're going to work to release some of the um, uh, the beams that are, that are in place to, to help keep it secure during launch and all the movement operations. They'll remove those beams and then they'll release the actual array itself from IROSA. And then after that, uh, flying on the end of the robotic arm, Josh Cassidy is going to get moved over to that work site, bringing the array with him. And then once they're there, they'll get into the actual installation steps. And that'll involve, as we saw through some of those graphics, um, actually unfolding the array into its uh, configuration where it could be installed. Uh, first thing they'll do is essentially get it soft captured it'll slide into place and there's some soft capture 
mechanisms that put that initial hold on the array, uh, and then there's a number of bolts that they'll drive to secure it in place. And then after that's done, uh, they tension some of the mid joints to make sure that it stays unfolded, and then we actually step into deploying, um, or first we actually will will mate the cables um, that are responsible for integrating that uh, array into the 4A power channel along with the existing one. So that work has to be done in Eclipse um, as the the primary inhibit, really the, the way we make sure that the arrays aren't transmitting any power down to where those cable connections are made is to be in Eclipse, be um, on the dark side of planet Earth where those are raised, can't see the sun, can't generate any electricity. Um, and so the, the spacewalk itself is timed um, per our timeline. If you've ever watched a spacewalk, you'll know that every single step essentially timelined out and practiced uh, here on the ground in the pool uh, and through previous spacewalks. But the, the entire uh, all the activities today are timelines, so by the time we hit the expected uh, point for essentially that cable connection, cable mating, uh, will be in an eclipse, so we'll be on the dark side of Earth, those arrays not generating any electricity, and then able to actually mate, actually install those cables to start integrating that. And so after those cables get connected, they will deploy the IROSA, uh, it'll unfurl all on its own, they just release two bolts, and then the array um, its internal mechanisms do the rest of the work to actually unfurl. And then they'll do one final tensioning but, um, task to uh, enable a, a device that's going to essentially pull on some wire that adds some tension to the arrays, and then it's on to, to clean up, stowing some of the final beams on the temporary spot uh, where the arrays are stored, and then it'll be on to ingress coming back inside the airlock. and. We start a spacewalk when we switch to battery power. We end a spacewalk when they begin repressing that crew lock section of the Quest airlock. So those will be our start and stop points for today. Uh, but things progressing really smoothly so far. Uh, we've already got Frank Rubio in the crew lock section and we can see the safer device getting uh, a fix now. That's Nicole Mann on the right side. Uh, of Josh Cassidy's spacesuit, and as soon as that's there, uh, they're going to start moving Cassidy into that crew lock section, and then we'll get ready to move into the, the depressed steps. And the teams uh, down here in Mission Control Houston did their go, no go, and we are going to be go for depress uh, once the crew is ready. So, a lot more to come, and we're going to see Cassidy now start to make his way over to that crew lock section. And now we see Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann guiding Josh Cassida into that crew lock section of the Quest airlock. Safer attached, all the different equipment tethers um, from his backpack to his helmet, all engaged. And so they're going to put him in his suit, and then you can see his service and cooling umbilical, that white hose that's kind of looping outside of the left part. Uh, that'll get moved in as well. And then we'll start to hear the crew. A step through some of the the actual depressurization of the airlock, and that's done using 
essentially two different means. Um, we have an actual air pump that's able to extract the atmosphere um, and return it to essentially the station's supply of atmosphere. That's going to um, get engaged and that's going to bring the pressure down to about 5 psi. And then once we get there, we're going to turn the pump off and the crew is going to do leak checks. So they do a leak check on their spacesuit once they're at a lower pressure inside the crew airlock. Um, so we'll hear the crew status their leak check. They'll, they'll give a, a yes, no on successful leak check. And then after that, we can continue with the depress. And then after that, we start to uh, use the, the two different systems so that that depress pump can only work down to about 2 psi after that. It's no longer really capable of extracting atmosphere from that crew lock section. And so after that, they open um, what's known as an MPEV valve uh, to just take all of that remaining atmosphere um, and it's used to vent it overboard. So we do lose a small amount of what we call consumables, just the breathable atmosphere every time we do a spacewalk just because your pump can't work below 2 psi uh, but it's once you're down at that low of a pressure it's a pretty negligible amount um, and so after that remaining pressure drops all that remaining atmosphere is vented overboard we get down to about half a psi um, or lower and then the crew will get the go to actually open up the hatch and frank rubio's ev1 he's going to be the one opening up doing the, the external hatch operations for today um, and so we'll hear that so we're going to hear uh, the suit IV on board um, so in this case uh, likely Koichi Wakata we're going to hear him talking to the crew as they step through uh, the depress up until we get to that we up until we get that pressure all the way down uh, and then it's going to hand over to the ground IV for today and that's going to be NASA astronaut Nick Haig. He's the one we're going to hear talking to the crew members uh, throughout all of the different procedures today, um, essentially being uh, the voice for all the teams down here on the ground. Uh, and just a reminder, some of your key players here in the room today, you've got uh, Nick Haig, who's going to be that suit IV, uh, and then our flight director leading the teams is Fiona Turret. And then in the very back row, uh, we've got Chris Mundy. He's the EVA flight controller leading uh, all of the different flight control teams responsible for building, training, executing today's spacewalk. Uh, we always talk about how everybody in this room is essentially just the tip of the spear, the tip of the iceberg. Uh, we've got a couple of other key folks on the EVA team uh, that are going to be working with Chris today. Uh, some of those primary positions, uh, we have an EVA task officer. This is somebody who understands every procedure in this EVA front to back uh, and essentially uh, all by heart at this point and for today that's going to be Miranda Nelson uh, with the task support position coming from Lucas Widener and then we'll have two essentially technical specialists uh, on the EVA team um, today it's Michael Dino he's the EMU the extravehicular mobility unit specialist uh, essentially knowledgeable in all all things spacesuit for today uh, and then uh, Stephen Villano is going to be our airlock specialist um, responsible for overseeing all the different systems in the airlock, which we're still in right now. Um, so that team working together uh, to help the flight control team get ready and to go out and execute this spacewalk today. All right, and right now we can see Koichi. So he was just talking. They have a hardline connection right now between the crew in the equipment lock and, uh, and the crew, uh, both Cassidy and Rubio, in their spacesuits. And then once we get to the actual depress, though, we'll start to hear a lot more chatter. You'll hear um, Koichi essentially giving them instructions to um, as they're switching. Uh, a depress pump on that located um, on the UIA, the umbilical interface assembly. That's a large control panel um, unit that's inside and that's connected to those service and cooling umbilicals. That's the main interface between uh, the spacesuits and the airlock itself.
Before we get though, before we get there, they're making sure they have all of their tools. We don't have any extra hardware in the crew lock itself, as again, that's about to be exposed to vacuum. Um, so they do just a final sweep of that, and then we'll see the hatch get closed. Station Houston on space ground one for airlock. Airlock one. Just wanted to give you a heads up, the ground is putting step 80 in place. throughout this spacewalk today. And we see Koichi Wakata working to get the hatch closed, isolating the crew lock section. An airlock between step 77 and uh, step 76 and 77 are complete. Copy complete. You guys can take care of step 78 through 80. Copy, it's in work. And so with those call downs, Koichi Okada letting the team here in Houston know that the hatch has been closed. The emergency MPEF, so the manual pressure equalization valve is closed, that gets closed and before we step into the actual depress activities. Again, we're going to be initially using uh, that pump to uh, essentially pump the atmosphere out of uh, out of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. We're going to bring it down to 5 PSI uh, and then pause to allow the crew to do a quick leak check on their suits and then we'll resume uh, and then we'll get that depressed pump, bringing it down to about 2 PSI and then we start to also use uh, what's known as the emergency MPEV manual pressure equalization valve and what that's essentially doing is taking the remaining atmosphere out of the crew lock section and dumping it out into the vacuum of space as that pump stops uh, to work once we get down to 2 PSI. 
So all that's coming up. Meanwhile, the, the teams here on the ground are just doing some final configuration work. We heard the crew go hot mic. Um, so they're going to be talking uh, without any push to talk. Without push to talk being necessary throughout their space flight or their spacewalk. We're going to be hearing them talk uh, directly to the ground IV here in Houston. Um, and that's going to be NASA astronaut Nick Haig. Station Houston on Space Ground One for airlock. Step 78 through 80 are complete. Okay, copy that. Uh, thank you. And uh, both 80 crew members, uh, your hot mic to uh, on Space Ground One at this time. Okay, thank you, Roger. Give you two copies. Thanks. Okay, uh, Josh, uh, on uh, UIA, please check depress pump power is off. Depress pump power OFS. Thank you, and then uh, please verify depress pump enabled LED on. Depress pump power enabled illuminated. Copy. Houston, uh, we are in step 84. With your go, we will proceed with the cue card. And station your go. Thank you. Okay, uh, Josh, uh, we will start the uh, DPS cue card. Kurok DPS. On UIA, switch DPS pump power to on and wait 10 seconds for a complete startup. DPS pump power. On. Okay, Josh, in uh, deepest pump manual ISO valve to open, and uh, both of you guys expect alert tone. Deepest pump man ISO valve, coming to open, and copy on the alert. Three, one, copy. And then monitor suit P gauges less than 5.5. Three, one, copy. Give me two copies. Deepest pump man ISO is open. And with that, the depressurization of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock is in work. So we were just listening as Koichi Wakata was walking Josh Cassidy to ZV2. He's working at the UIA, the Umbilical Interface Assembly, essentially a control panel that they have inside of the crew lock section that allows them to access the depress pump, um, their service and cooling umbilicals that are connected to their suits, providing power, uh, hardline comm, uh, and also fluids at this point. So still integrated into the station systems. Uh, we did get confirmation that the pressure is now dropping inside of the crew lock. So we're going to continue to just draw that atmosphere out using the depress pump until the crew lock gets to right about 5 PSI, at which point uh, the crew lock is going to get the uh, direction to uh, shut that pump down. They're going to close that isolation valve. Um, and then at that point, they're then going to step into leak checks. So doing quick automated leak checks using the display and control module on their spacesuits um, of their EMUs. Because again, while we still have pressure inside, um, the, the EMUs are going to be at a slightly higher pressure uh, than that 5 PSI. And they're going to do a leak check and make sure we don't have any atmosphere or anything like that coming out of the suit. After we get past leak checks, we'll step back into that depress activity. They're going to open that isolation valve again. That's going to allow the depress uh, pump to continue working. They're also going to open what's called an emergency MPEV uh, manual pressure equalization valve. Um, we start using that after we're below 5 PSI, um, essentially working in conjunction with the, uh, the pump itself. And that's going to continue 
until the crew lock hits about 2 PSI at that point. Uh, the pump, its valve is going to get closed and it's going to get powered off as the pump stops working once we get to 2 PSI and below. Uh, the emergency MPAV remains opened as we will continue to watch the pressure drop. We'll get to a little less than half of a PSI, usually a lot closer to zero, at which point we're essentially in vacuum. You'll have essentially an equal pressure between the crew lock and the outside of the space station, which is at vacuum. In step 85, the removed metal canisters are zero number 20 and 22. Easy copy, good number. And that call down right there was um, reporting the, the removal of um, some of the canisters that are used to remove CO2 uh, while everybody's inside of the equipment lock section. So at this point, all of, all of that CO2 removal uh, being done by the normal station systems like the seizure of the carbon dioxide removal assembly. We talked a little bit earlier about the Medox canisters inside the spacesuits. That's how we're essentially capturing that carbon dioxide that they're breathing out throughout their spacewalk. Those, those are regenerative, so they have essentially a saturation point at which, uh, at which point they won't be able to remove any more CO2 um, as they're using a chemical process, using an oxide inside. Once all that oxide is used up, we're not removing any more CO2. Um, so that's why we're, we're keeping an eye on that and some of the other consumables throughout the spacewalk um, just to determine how long we're going to be out the door. Um, after spacewalks, though, those Medox canisters get removed and then they get put into uh, a regenerative system. It's essentially an oven uh, where we heat those canisters up. Uh, that breaks the bonds uh, between that oxide and the carbon dioxide. That oxide can then be used again. That carbon dioxide gets dumped into the larger station atmosphere uh, and then gets removed using the, the ECLIS, the life support system on board station. So that's how we're kind of constantly reusing and recycling um, these Medox canisters used in these spacesuits for spacewalks. Keeping an eye though, the crew lock section is still a little over 8.5 PSI. We're counting down from about 14.7, which is what the station atmosphere is kept at. It's pretty close um, to what you have here at sea level, 14.7 PSI. We're going to see the pressure continue to tick down in the crew lock section until we're at about 5, at which point uh, Josh Cassidy is going to uh, essentially close the valve, turn that pump off, stop it from working so they can conduct those leak checks. And then after we're past the leak checks, we can start to get into the final depress and then the beginning of our spacewalk. Reminder, for the U.S. spacewalks, uh, operationally we mark the beginning of a spacewalk is when the crew switches over to battery power. So it's after they're off those umbilicals and running solely on batteries inside the suits. At that point, we will already be in a vacuum setting inside the airlock. Um, and then we're going to continue the timer until they're back in the airlock at the very end. And once the hatch is closed and we start to get the repressurization of the airlock, that'll mark the official end. One and two, when the crew lock gets to 6.0 PSI, expect alert tone. EV1 copy. EV2 copy, space. And the crew lock right now coming up on 7 PSI. The crew's going to get an alert tone at 6. And then once we get to 5, they're going to close the, the isolation valve on that depressurization pump. It's going to stop it from drawing the atmosphere out, and then we'll step into those leak checks. Um, you're going to hear them referred to as EV-1, EV-2. Just a reminder, EV-1 for today's Frank Rubio. He's your lead spacewalker. 
lead spacewalker. He's going to be prime for all of the hatch operations when we're getting ready to exit the quest airlock and when we're coming back at the end. And then EV2 is Josh Cassida. This is the third spacewalk for this pair. Uh, they've already completed two, each in excess of seven hours. Um, this one also planned to, to last about seven hours. It's uh, going to look very similar to the spacewalk that they just did back on December 3rd, where they installed one of these IROSA solar arrays. Um, at this point, we're just going to uh, a different power channel. So we're continuing to follow along. We're at about 6.5 PSI inside the crew lock. So again, that next major checkpoint is going to be once we hit 5. And meanwhile, in the equipment lock section, we're continuing to see Nicole Mann on the left, Koichi Wakata there in the middle. He's got in his hand what's known as the depress repress cue card. That's where he's reading off the procedures uh, to get the instructions to the crew. And we're below 6 PSI now, so we're going to be coming up soon on that 5 PSI hold point. They're going to continue to put the crew lock or the equipment lock section uh, kind of back in order a little bit, and then they're going to move over uh, to set up for the robotic operations for today. So they're going to be responsible for operating uh, the Canada Arm 2, the big robotic arm, as they're going to be using that to... Houston EV2, TCV's back to four again. Yeah, they're going to be using that robotic arm. Uh, Josh Cast is going to be... Houston copies, TCV4. Houston EV1, not sure if I ever told you my TCV, I moved it to 6. It was a uh, before we transitioned to hot mic. Copy 6. And those values that you're hearing, they're, they're TCV, that's their temperature control valve. That's just a small dial that they have on the front of their spacesuits in that display and control module. Um, and they use that to essentially actively control just how cool or how cold uh, the cooling is inside their suits. Depress pump manual ISO valve close. Depress pump manual ISO valve. And both of you, uh, you can see the battle closed. Everyone copy? And copy the battle closed. We are enclosed. Uh, just uh, confirm uh, the press stop manual ISO valve is closed. Press stop manual ISO valve is closed. Thank you. EVU 1 and 2, uh, we do the uh, leak check. So, um, switch display status until leak check question mark displayed. Leak check question mark for EV2. EV1. And then uh, switch display yes, hold for two seconds, and follow displayed instructions. EV1 copies. EV2 copies. All right, so right now we're holding at 5 PSI inside of that crew lock section where Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy are suited up. They're now stepping through leak checks on their spacesuits.
TV1, make check complete. Make check complete for EV2. The uh, sector O2 actuator in EDA. You want to work? It works for EV2. And getting word, we've had two good leak checks, so both suits checked out, looking good for today. Next up, we're going to be able to step back in uh, to start continuing with the depressurization of the crew lock area. So at this point, we're going to hear them uh, essentially turn that, turn that depressed pump back on, opening up that isolation valve. Uh, and then also opening up uh, what's called the emergency MPEV, that's a manual pressure equalization valve. And those two are going to work in concert to continue dropping the pressure down. Now uh, that uh, depress pump is going to continue working until we're at about 2 psi inside the airlock, then that's going to get turned off. And then the rest of the atmosphere will go out via that, ma uh, that emergency MPEV, that manual valve. And O2 position EDA for EV2. Copy that, thank you. For Josh, depress pump manual ISO valve to open and both of you expect alert tone. Here one copy. EV2 copies, depress pump manual ISO valve coming to open. Copy. Okay, Josh, depress pump manual ISO valve is already open, right? Depress pump manual ISO valve is open. Thank you. EV1 and 2, monitor suit speed gauge less than 5.5. EV1 copy. EV2 copy. And so by opening up that isolation valve, the depress is once again in work. So the depress pump we're already at about four and a quarter PSI, so it's going to continue taking down again until we get to about two, and then all the work gets done by that manual pressure equalization valve to get the rest of the atmosphere that's going to get vented out. The pump saves all the atmosphere. The valve rejects it out into the vacuum of space, so we do lose a small amount of atmosphere uh, with every single spacewalk. Uh, but it's largely a ne negligible amount, um, and we have the capability to continually essentially put breathing gases back into the, uh, the station's atmosphere through cargo flights, uh, but the majority of it just constantly being recycled by the different hardware on board.
and just checking in. We're continuing with the depress of the crew lock section of the Quest airlock. We're down just above two. Again, after we get uh, to two, the pump's going to come off, and then it's over uh, to a manual valve to vent out the rest. Crew lock is at two psi. Depress pump manual ISO valve closed. Press pump, man, ISO valve is closed. Okay, on UIA, switch depress pump power to off, OFF. Depress pump power, off, OFF. Okay, thank you. And now we'll hand over to Nick uh, for the follow on uh, depress cue card procedures. Uh, we'll talk with you from the robotics workstation. Thanks, Luigi. Amazing job, two days in a row. Couldn't agree more. Thanks, Guichi, Duke, for getting them all suited up and uh, ready to go. And good morning slash afternoon, Josh, Frank. Uh, let's start by going through your tether config. Hey, Nick, good morning. And uh, thank you to the entire team for uh, getting us here. Good job, and looking forward to working with uh, you two. All right, so I will start. My way, sir. Yes. Okay, so my red hook is on my right, dealing with extender. Gate closed. The clock's back on black. My red reel is unlocked. My yellow hook is over to my green reel, gate closed to block black on black. Green hook is to my red reel, uh, gate closed. It is unlocked. And then my anchor hook is on my mini workstation. My right waist cutter is on my right gearing extender, gate closed to block black on black. And that goes over to Josh's Hook, and I can see both hooks are uh, gate closed, hook lock, black on black. Josh, I'll go over to you. Okay. Starting with my left side, my left waist tether is gate closed, side lock, black on black on my D-ring extender. It goes to the D-ring extender of the airlock. That hook is gate closed, side lock, black on black. Also on that left D-ring extender of mine, I've got a safety tether hook, gate closed, slider lock, black on black. That is my 55 foot that is unlocked and goes to my mini workstation. On my right side, I've got my safety tether pack, my red hook, gate closed, slider lock, black on black on my D ring extender. Red reel is unlocked. On that red reel is a green hook, it is unlocked. The yellow hook goes to my green reel. It is gate closed, starter lock, black on black. That green hook, or that green reel is unlocked. And as Frank pointed out, uh, my anchor for that safety tether pack is gate closed, starter lock, black on black onto his waist tether, gate closed, starter lock, black on black. And finally, my right waist tether is gate closed, slider lock, black on black on my right D-ring center, and it goes to my main workstation. And Frank, Josh, we copy all that is a good tether config. Yeah, thanks, Nick.
All right, so quick status. We just heard uh, the ground IV NASA astronaut Nick Haig. He's going to be uh, talking our two crew members through the spacewalk today, so he's the voice you'll be hearing from here in Mission Control. Uh, meanwhile, Frank Rubio, EV-1, Josh Cassidy, EV-2, in the crew lock. Uh, they're getting closer to vacuum. There's just about one pound per square inch of pressure still inside. It's going to continue to leak down once they get to about half of a PSI. They'll get the go to open up the hatch and begin this spacewalk today. Again, uh, the operational start time for today is after they get off of those service and cooling umbilicals and switch their suits over to battery power. Uh, just uh, checking in with you as we wait for uh, the crew lock to uh, get down to zero. Uh, one reminder, when it gets close, you can expect some alert tones. Um, big picture, uh, in terms of timeline, Koichi and Duke did an awesome job. You guys were super efficient, and we're 10, 15 minutes up on the timeline, so we're just going to go nice and slow and methodical out the, uh, out the hatch and, uh, and let the Medox condition properly. Uh, and then also we're going to have a patch of some ratty comm. Uh, we're going to be down KU. We should have S-band, so we'll try to maintain voice through that, so we may ask you to repeat some things if, uh, if we don't hear them. Just want to give you a heads up. Okay, we copy. Uh, Nick, and thanks so much for the uh, overview. We do copy as well, Nick, and just a heads up, I went TCB to 5.5 just in case we find ourselves in a warm restart. Copy, Josh. 5.5 on the TCB, and I've got the cuff checklist open. All right, so the crew continuing to wait until we get that crew lock just about down to vacuum. We're less than a PSI. Uh, you just heard another reference to TCV. That's the thermal control valve. Anytime the crew's uh, altering that, they're just giving a heads up to the team on the ground. Uh, it's a small dial that they have uh, on the front of their suits. Okay, so what we're going to look for is uh, crew lock pressure less than a half PSI, and that can be uh, from our telemetry down here or if you see it on the uh, DCM or the hatch gauge. And so probably looking at a couple more minutes until we get uh, just below half a PSI and they'll be able to step through the hatch uh, operations. Uh, but you'll, you'll hear those TCV values standing for a thermal control valve. It's a, it's a small dial that goes between 0 and 10 on the front of their suits and then the higher the number, the, the colder that they're making it. Um, as the astronauts are working inside of the suit, again, you're in a completely sealed environment, you're essentially in a small space craft yourself, um, you're generating heat, and so we have an active heat uh, rejection system to help keep them cool. Uh, they wear what's known as a liquid cooling and ventilation garment, or LCVG, um, that looks a little similar to long underwear, and then it has tubing throughout the entire thing that's able to run cold water um, around them. And so as they generate heat, that heat transfers into that liquid running around them that then goes into the, the backpack section of the, uh, of the spacesuit and ultimately gets to a place called the sublimator. Um, and that's going to be using a physical process known as sublimation. Um, so some of that water uh, eventually turning into ice as it's exposed to vacuum and then that ice sublimates and by sublimating you are going directly from a solid to a gas. That's what sublimation means. And so that ice turns into a vapor essentially as it's exposed to vacuum. And the act of sublimating draws energy from stuff around it. That's drawing that heat away from the water that's passing through the sublimator. And then it's cooled down and then goes right back through that liquid cooling garment. So that's essentially the process that we're using to help keep the crew members cool while they're working inside of the spacesuit and they can control that um, freely throughout their spacewalk. Uh, they either start getting into a more intensive activity or spending a lot of time uh, in direct sunlight that can tend to heat up the suits um, so they can actively turn up and turn down the cooling just um, however they need to throughout.
in right now. We're at about 0.6 PSI, so a little bit further to go, uh, at which point they'll be at the go. So Frank Rubio, he's EV1 today. Once they're outside, you'll be able to recognize him by uh, having the red stripes around uh, the legs of his suit. And then Josh Casta is EV2. This is the this is going to be the third spacewalk that this pair has done together. Pretty much all of these have been focused uh, on this work to continue upgrading the power generation system on the station. Just a couple of quick stats as we get ready. This is going to be the 257th spacewalk in support of station assembly and the 12th one out of the spacewalk this year. Um, so again, the third one for them. Airlock pressure of zero decimal four. You're reading on the gauge. We see a little bit higher pressure here. We're going to wait just a little bit, 10 seconds to a handover. I'll catch you on the other side. And so you just heard we're, we're heading into a handover. So we're heading into a period where pretty much over the next 20 minutes, we might have our video connection with the station kind of cutting in and out um, as we move through gaps and coverage between our uh, teachers, our tracking data and relay satellites. Um, the good thing about spacewalks is we'll pretty much have um, wall-to-wall uh, connection with the station in terms of video coverage once we're out the door. Um, over the next 20 minutes, it'll be a little bit ratty, so it might be comms only. But quick status, both Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy in the crew lock section of the airlock. They had two successful leak checks on their suits as we went through the depress. Um, they have been moving about 10, 15 minutes ahead of the timeline. Again, this is the third one this pair has done uh, with the help of uh, Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann to get suited up and get into the airlock itself. Uh, we're coming up on half of a PSI. Once we get a little bit below that, they'll get the go to start moving into some of the hatch operations uh, and then getting their suits onto battery power, which will mark the official start of today's spacewalk. In total, plan to last about seven hours today uh, with the goal of installing a new IROS, an International Space Station Rollout Solar Array that's going to further augment the station's power generation capability. So. They already went through uh, essentially a safety tether setup uh, as each of these crew members is going to be tethered to the station structure at all times throughout the spacewalk. Um, so the first thing they do is just check the location of all those tethers before they head out the door. Uh, back with you. Uh, we see uh, pressure less than uh, 0.5 down here on the ground, so you're go to open and stow the EV hatch. Copy. Go to open and stow. It works. And so Frank Rubio, EV-1, just got the go to open and stow the EV hatch. That's the hatch uh, that leads to the outside. That's um, going to give them open access out into the vacuum of space, after which they'll egress or exit uh, the station quest airlock and begin the spacewalk today. Um, so some of the first things they're going to do is split up. Uh, Josh. Cassida moving off to uh, get the space station's robotic arm ready. Copy, Frank. Uh, but Josh Cassida moving off to uh, get the arm ready, but also start to prepare the IROSA for its removal from its temporary still location on what's called the FSE. Uh, he's going to be releasing uh, ARDS anti-rotation devices. Um, those are just uh, additional locks that are in place to help keep the uh, IROSA secure on that temp site when they're packed into the uh, trunk part of the Dragon spacecraft. 
Uh, meanwhile, Frank Rubio is going to move out to the work site and begin routing some of the cables. Emergency MPEV is closed. Copy, Koichi. And Koichi Wakata reporting the emergency MPEV. That's the manual pressure equalization valve that we use to uh, get rid of the last bits of atmosphere. Just want to confirm you've got the uh, hatch stowed as well. Affirmative. Okay, so we're going to step into uh, post depress. Uh, so both of you, you're going to want to stagger your switch throws. Expect warning tones, but you're going to take power to bat. And so a lot of developments there real quick. So our spacewalk did officially start. Both of these uh, crew members, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy, switching their suits over to battery power at 7.19 a.m. Central Time. That's it. Josh, uh, your SU stow is complete. And EV-1. We want to is disconnected and stowed. And DCM covers on. Copy, Frank. So, Josh, if you can check that the depressed pump man ISO valve is closed. Depressed pump man ISO valve is closed. Uh, so, for both of you, you'll take your TCV to max hot. Copy. 
back front. Good work. V2 is in back front. And copy, Josh. And again, the official start time of our spacewalk today, 7.19 a.m. Central Time, 8.19 a.m. Eastern. Copy, Frank. And so you're both go to take your water switch to on. EV1, water is on. EV2, water is on. And you'll check your DCM is blank and your bite is off. Comment for EV1. Spray blank and bite off for EV2. Copy for both, and you're good to set your TCV uh, as desired. And uh, I'm five seconds from a handover. EV1 copy. And so a quick handover until we get calm back, but again, a lot has just unfolded. Our spacewalk officially started, 7.19 a.m. Central, 8.19 a.m. Eastern. Both the crew members in a fully depressurized airlock with the hatch open, switched their suits over to battery power, kicking things off. Uh, after that, they uh, had disconnected and stowed the SCU, the service and cooling umbilical that up until that point uh, was able to provide both power, cooling, fluids, and hardline communications. Those get stowed uh, with the special cover over them until the very end of our spacewalk when they get attached back to their suits. They. Uh, I am set at five. Actually, five and a half. VB2 TCV four. Copy five and a half and four. Um, we'll take a suit P gauge reading from both of you. Uh, EV1, four decimal three. EV2, four decimal three. Okay, copy. And uh, just to let you know, we're good uh, suit parameters here on the ground. Uh, your visors, you're going to be going out into daylight. Um, and we are ready, Frank, for you to open the thermal cover. Okay, copy that, and work. And Frank, as you do that, you'll stow the hook on the uh, stiffener tether point, cinch the strap, and then report the number of Sharpie lines. Copy. All right, so again, the crew underway with our spacewalk. The clock started taking about seven and a half minutes ago at 7.19 a.m. Central Time. They've reconfigured a couple of different systems in the crew lock section, uh, the service and cooling umbilicals. Uh, they double checked that the... Um, go to the tether point and I see six copy lines. Copy Frank, six lines and you're uh, go to egress the airlock. And uh, just for your guys' essay, we're still voice only for the next handful of minutes. One copy. Give me two copies. All right, Josh, you ready? You ready. Hey. Go. All right, so Ruby and Cassidy are starting to move out of the airlock. If you're looking to put your anchor down on the port stanchion of handrail 554. Rubio will be first out as EV-1. He's opening up a thermal cover. It's a, a small bit of uh, protective covering that sits on the outside of the hatchway. Uh, they're going to be able to close that once they get outside. It just protects uh, the interior of the airlock from different thermal concerns uh, from direct sunlight. 
first thing out is again double checking some tether points getting those ready and then we're going to see these two spacewalkers split off to go do different tasks Copy, Frank. That's a good config. Uh, so you're go to put Josh's anchor on the aft D ring. And so the first tethers they're working with are the anchor ones. These are one of several that they're going to use to remain tethered to the station structure at all times. Uh, Frank's got one to uh, a hand rail right outside, and as he's first out, he'll be able to uh, attach Josh's anchor, which is currently attached to one of his own waist tethers, uh, to a different uh, ring just outside of the airlock. Right, Josh, you are on the... Uh, Dealing, gate closed, put on black on black. Copy. And just verify something real quick. All right, so getting those initial tether points in place as both move to get out of the airlocks. We should be getting video comm back with the station in about four minutes. To the mic back. And we uh, have a go to release. And I will bring the uh, more small with me. Okay, hey, Nick, uh, so Nick has uh, got a CRT right on the M bag. He's also got it on his CRT. And I'm going to go ahead and release the big hook from inside, and we'll take that with us. If you agree. Those are good words, Josh. I think here comes the hook. We're going to release. And right now, Josh Casto working to retrieve and hand over a crew lock bag that has the power cables that we're going to be using. Okay. Copy. Are you are clear. Sounds at a really bad angle when you come out, so it'll be right near your face. You're ready for it? Okay. Thank you. And Frank Rubio is going to take that back. You guys are in a good config. Uh, Frank, you're going to position to the forward side of the airlock uh, for Josh's egress. Okay, now you're there. So again, stepping through this initial egress, exiting of the airlock activity, Frank Rubio already outside the airlock, getting ready to give the go for Josh to move outside as well. Now, once they get outside and we're able to get this video comm back in the next two to three minutes, uh, they'll get the goes to turn on their HECA, which if you love acronyms. And Frank, Josh, uh, once you guys are both outside, the uh, first thing we'll have you do is turn on your HECA. Copy. 
think it looks like I'm getting hung up, but my PGT is clear. Can you see? Once we get video back, they'll be turning the heck of time. We heard that call uh, or that go um, from Nick Hague down here on the ground. Now, HECA, that's H E C A, that's an acronym with acronyms inside of acronyms. That HECA stands for the high definition. High definition extravehicular activity mobility unit camera assembly. So, if you, I'm ready when you are. Okay. Oops, let me get my effect on. Okay. I shouldn't have left that sun. Yeah, I don't see green LED. I agree. Looks good. Thermal cover is closed. 
Copy. Uh, so, Frank, you're going to translate out to the Green Hook location. Uh, you're leading the way. Uh, just a reminder for no fare leading. Okay, copy that. In route over to the uh, over to the coast. Josh, a little bit. Okay, I'll be there with you. All right, well, with that, we heard Frank and Josh going through what's called buddy checks. As you can imagine, it's hard to get a good look at your own suit. Josh, as you're following, uh, just a uh, reminder for the caution to watch out for the tub cable. Thank you. Maybe two copies, thank you. And so the buddy checks each of these astronauts, gets a, a look at the other, verifying uh, that they see lights for things like their HECA, the helmet cams, um, and then the various. Josh, I'm at the uh, top of the feeder spur. Okay. Good. I'm on the feeder spur. So, yeah, looking at things like the safer handles, making sure they're not engaged, things of that nature. And it looks like we're starting to get our first helmet camera view. So, this is number 20. So, this should be Frank Rubio, uh, whose first task is going to be to head out um, to the actual site where we're going to be installing the IROSA today uh, and start routing some of the cables. And so he's got, uh, it's essentially two cables, uh, but they're going to be functioning as two different Y connectors. So one end of the cables is split into two pieces. One end goes into the, uh, the new IROSA once it's there, the other into a connection for the existing solar array, and then those get plugged in. Uh, to the 4A power channel. And so by installing all these, once the IROS is in place, we're essentially going to be integrating uh, the IROSA and the existing array uh, into the same power channel. Yep, copy. And uh, so, Frank, you're going to be looking for uh, handrail 3652. That should be uh, just nadir of the starboard seat of cart. And then each of the handrails on the outside have numbers. Your uh, handrail is 3651 on the Nader stanchion. Copy 3651 Nader stanchion. But each of those handrails will have numbers engraved into them, so that's what they can use to help kind of find their way. And this is just looking right over the shoulder of Frank Rubio as he starts to head out to the work site to start routing some of those cables. Meanwhile, Josh Cassida splitting off. And for both of them. And copy, you're at the starboard seat card. Frank, Josh, while you guys are working on your green hooks there, I'm going to read off some warnings and cautions, so that's okay. Hey, Nick, uh, just uh, for your awareness, my green hook is down on the inboard expansion of 3652. I'm in route to the back. Copy, Frank. And the EV2 is ready for those cautions. And so there's a warning. Uh, EV1 also ready. There's a warning for the. Uh, uh, grapple shafts and the uh, cervical coupling teeth that, that they're no touch. And then for the FSC, it's a reminder to translate slow, less than uh, four inches per second. Uh, wait for motion to dampen out before imparting loads. 
uh, don't translate simultaneously and, uh, and avoid contact with IROSA blankets and solar cells. You want copies? BV2 copies, thanks. And the ground IV for today, Nick Hay, reading out a couple of cautions. Um, anytime we do these spacewalks. So you've got a great, good green hook down. You're going to work on uh, bundling the cable bag and then translating outboard. Um, and Josh, 3651, you might uh, have to wait for Frank and uh, maybe be able to give him a hand getting that bundle together. Yeah, I agree. I think I will have to wait. Yep. And big picture for both of you, we're about 10 minutes up on the uh, the timing with our clips, so we're good just working this slow and methodical and conditioning the Medox the right way. Sounds great. Sounds great. Thanks, man. Station Houston on space. EV2, TCV is now 5.5. Copy, Josh, 5.5. Josh Gasser with another TCV call out. Again, just adjusting the, the thermal control valve on his suit, just how cool he's making it. And the number goes between zero and 10. The higher the number, the colder it is. Actually, I may, I may just undo the football, but I'll keep it. Are you able to now um, release it? The large small? Um, 
the IDA bag. I'll just keep the, uh, I'll keep the large small words up. So I am ready to the uh, mic bag, and the mic bag is ready in two locations to the IDA bag. I can see it's uh, required to release it from Cedar Park. Okay. I can confirm that it is ready. The large small is connected. You have the other one. Yep. So I'm going to release this from block for square alpha, and I'll leave it free. Unless you wanted it. Oh, if you can hook it back up, that'd be great. Just to thank you. Frank, Josh, want to let you know that we uh, have good HECA and uh, are following along now with video as well as voice. Um, so, Frank, you got that bundled up. Good work. And uh, you're going to translate out to the work side. Uh, note in here to uh, about a fairly zenith of the port TFR as you go out. Copy that, thanks, Nick. And yeah, thanks to Josh for helping get that bundled. Oh, no problem. It's good. Alright, picking up my local one. Josh, one day, uh, do you mind if I go first here? Or are you you're heading there? I'm heading there. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, with the bag handoff now complete, you know, our spacewalkers are going to go two separate directions right now for Frank Rubio. He's going to be heading over to uh, the canister, essentially the area where we're actually going to be installing uh, the new solar array. He's going to pre-route some of the cables that are going to be required uh, to essentially jumper the new solar array into the power channel itself. So he'll get those laid out and tied down uh, in advance of the array itself showing up. Meanwhile, Josh Casada is going to move over to the FSE, the flight support equipment. It's essentially the, the cargo pallet. Uh, the outboard TFR, uh, there is a long duration that's holding the uh, brake arms in place. It's going to keep me from being able to put my cord up and over the TFR. Yeah, copy, Frank. Uh, understand the uh, the config. Uh, idea is to separate you, uh, Zenith, and, and keep Josh and Nader. So if you can go over and around the, the whole TFR, that'll achieve the same end. Yeah, that's the problem. Is uh, the uh, I don't know if you can see it on the hacker here. But, uh, well, let me see if I can rotate it around here. It doesn't quite have enough slots to come off the top of the TFR, so I'm not able to go up and over. Um, yeah, copy that, Frank. Can you can you take the tether over the uh, the top of the brake handle? Yeah, Frank, if you can put it up there, it should help us keep that separation. Okay. I'll just put it up and over the width. It'll have a little bit better. Uh... Copy. Sounds like a good plan.
And Frank, uh, as you head out, uh, we'll just want to check that you've got your gauntlets in place. Yeah, both gauntlets are uh, down covering the metal portion. Copy all, thanks. And Frank, I'm going to knock out a couple cautions for you here uh, on the mass canister. So. Uh, no sudden movements, uh, slow motion, less than uh, four inches per second uh, on the BGN, the mod kit, to avoid cyclic loading. Uh, watch the snag hazard on the uh, the battery and AP cables on the IEA, and you've got a 40-pound uh, max load uh, on the mod kit. Yeah. So a few quick call outs from Ground IV Nick Haig there. We're just about 35 minutes into today's spacewalk. So we're into the first major task of the day for each of these uh, two. Just a heads up, having these safety tethers, especially the 55 foot that isn't really retracting very well. It is unlocked. It's not real strong, just creating some snag hazards. So I'm just taking my time to make sure we don't create anything. Copy that, Josh. We're doing that. Yeah, and copy that, Josh. All right, Nick, I'm at 5107. Copy. That's the handrail for the cable bag. Copy. You want to position the lid hinge toward the center of the IEA if you can, and uh, use the ORU tether points if needed. And Josh, now that you've got your green hook down, uh, it's translating up to the, the crew lock bag tango. Uh, and so placing a fair lead on the port seated cart and uh, going up, up and around stanchion alpha. And again, at this point, a little more than 36 minutes into today's spacewalk, both spacewalkers moving out to their first major task. EV-1 Frank Rubio heading out to the work site. Uh, he just got some cautions read from uh, the ground IV Nick Haig, essentially just reminding them not to make any sudden movements and part a lot of loads uh, into what's called the mass canister, the mod kit. This is the hardware that's installed uh, to attach the new rollout solar array um, to position it over the existing one. Uh, he's heading out there with a cable bag that has some cables in it, and he's going to pre-deploy some of those. This is a little bit of an issue coming out here. You sure you want me to go more Zenith? My Fairly. Yeah, Josh, you, you've got the best guys on in the situation there. These fair leads were intended to keep separation, but if you don't think it's necessary, you don't have to do it. Okay. Sounds good. Frank, if you need it on the TFR, uh, it'll be there for you, but uh, okay. I'm not seeing the need. All right, copy. So in this view, we can see, and we were just hearing Josh Cassidy, he is EV2. So Josh, your uh, next task is going to be putting a, an adjustable equipment tether on the stanchion alpha for the beam stow task that's going to happen later. Okay, understood. I'm going to take another minute and manage uh, all the stuff here on my mini workstation. It's uh, a little bit of a pain. Yep, understand. Lots of adjustables and rats. And we're running through just a couple of things we're looking at. So you can see Josh Casted there in the bottom left, just above him, the large white pallet with the cross point on the, the very top that's the FSE, the flight support equipment. That's the uh, the temporary stowage point right now for these IROS solar arrays. That's what they were essentially packed on top of as they rode up in the trunk of the cargo dragon vehicle. Those two circular pieces you can see, 
That is the IROSA for today, the International Space Station Rollout Solar Array. They arrive folded up. They're going to be translated or moved over to the install point in this folded up configuration before uh, they get unfolded and unfurled by the spacewalkers. Um, the first major task for Josh Casa is going to be releasing um, ARDSs, anti-rotation devices. These are just safety um, connections in place uh, to prevent any rotation as the uh, arrays and the, the equipment carriers getting loads imparted on it during any launch or ascent um, or robotic motion. So those are going to get released. Um, and then they're going to get ready to remove the FSE beams. These are two support beams uh, running perpendicular over the top of the iroses that are there to hold them in place. Obviously, we need to release those before we can slide the iros out and begin carrying it over to the work site. So he's going to first release those anti-rotation devices and then step into that beam release. He's going to be joined in that beam release activity uh, once Frank Rubio has completed routing uh, those initial cables. Again, those cables that Frank Rubio is routing, he's got essentially two, uh, but there are a couple of cables bundled together. They're going to be Y connectors with one end with two points, one going into the new solar array, one connecting to the legacy solar array, both of those coming together to then connect into the power channel, allowing them both to continue to provide power to the 4A. So looking through Frank Rubio's helmet cam, you can see some of those cables. He's going to get those uh, essentially routed through some of the different fixtures and wire tied down um, very close to where they're ultimately going to be connected. We're not going to make those connections until the uh, solar array itself is in place and we are in a um, and we are in an eclipse. Frank following along, saw you uh, get the cable out of the cable bag. Uh, so you're going to head over to that left side of the mod kit and uh, stow the crew lock bag. And looking at Josh Cassidy, he's moving up to the FSE. Again, that's the, the large white pallet you can see with the two targets on it. And then there's the IROSA, and it's folded up in completely furled configuration. At, at the very end, on either end, we're looking at um, are the booms for the, the IROSA itself. Uh, and those are, after it's completely unfolded and unfurled, those are what's going to provide um, the actual structural support for those solar cells in the middle. Um, he got couple of cautions just as he got over here again we're not we're trying not to impart any major loads so not really rocking anything uh, as they work to attach um, they're not going to be moving simultaneously once they're both on the FSC and they don't want them uh, touching any of the blankets where those solar cells are on IROSA so you're going to continually hear these call outs for just different cautions and warnings And affirmative, that's handrail 12 on that stanchion alpha, right there in your hand. And as Cassidy gets closer to his control stopping point, he's going to get himself uh, tethered in to this area. Then he's going to break out the PGT, the pistol grip tool. You can see it attached to his mini workstation. Uh, you can see the small number three on it. I think we're going to use the forward stanchion, so I'm just going to leave that hanging. You're okay with that. Yep, and copy, Josh. That looks good. Okay, I think you're going to let me get rid of this long version tight on tether next, am I right? That's, that's affirmative. Uh, that's going to go on the tower handrail. Yeah. And Frank, I see you stringing the uh, crew lock bag in between the uh, lower strut and the mid strut. Uh, after you get that in a good position, uh, you're going to retrieve the square scoop from inside crew lock bag in. Okay. 
and again coming up we're gonna we're gonna see Josh Casa using the PGT, the pistol grip tool. It's more or less the electric drill uh, that we use to interact with pretty much every bolt uh, that you'll see. Um, we're going to hear a number of settings called out. That pistol grip tool has the capability of dialing in exactly how much torque you want to be imparting, how quickly, uh, how many rotations per minute it's uh, conducting. You can limit the amount of torque that it's going to impart, uh, and then it has a, a LED display readout where the crew member is able to see how many turns it's completed and uh, to give you an idea we planned these spacewalks out to the point where we know how many turns that we're expecting them to have to do uh, and then giving them very precise instructions on just how much torque uh, and things of that nature. Take that scoop over to the mounting bracket. Um, you're going to install it at that 45 degree angle as it points uh, inboard to the to station. Um, you want to confirm that's locked before you release the red. Yep. And then throughout, you might also hear reference to a scoop. That's another tool that the crew members have access to. Uh, they're essentially uh, equipment aids um, for handling things. They're handles that they can attach to different payloads, to structures. To the right, and it is locked. Really correct. Copy, Frank. Good install on the scoop. And so Frank Rubio just installed a scoop that is essentially a temporary handrail for him now. See that you've got the uh, the long duration on the tower handrail. That's a good location for it. Uh, when you finish up there. Uh, we'll want you to check your left safer handle. We think we might have seen it in video is uh, a little bit up. Okay. And looking at a brief handover now, we should get video back pretty quickly this time though. Uh, we won't have another long gap for for quite a while, uh, but we are still into the, the first major task for each of these spacewalkers. Uh, as they continue to work through, we were about 10 to 15 minutes ahead in the timeline so far. Um, even if we get too far ahead, we'll have to wait uh, at some point in the spacewalk just to make sure when we get to the cable connection part, we're in a, an eclipse. On the tower. And... Copy, Josh. And we're back with you. Just had a short hand over there. Thanks, Nick. Both handles are down. Copy. Thanks for checking that. Um, Josh, for you, the, the next... Oh, thank you for catching it. Yeah, no problem. The next thing for you is going to be uh, retrieving the socket caddy from inside the crew lockback tango and uh, stowing it on the external using a ret, and then you're going to do your socket swap uh, for the 12-inch uh, the 716. Nick, I'm looking at the uh, right side soft capture. It looks like it was uh, um, kind of in a capture position, so I'm going to go ahead and cycle it and reset it. Yeah, copy that, Frank. And near any words on how it feels when you're cycling it would be appreciated. Okay. Um, it's kind of medium. Um, Medium amount of friction, so not quite as hard as those uh, on the left on the previous one, but not nearly as easy as the one on the right on the previous one. Okay, understand. And uh, we're back with the video, so I see you're making headway on uh, routing the uh, right cables.
And so this view from Frank Rubio's helmet camera is, again, he's working to route some of those cables. These are going to be the, the power connection cables that's going to integrate uh, the newly deployed IROSA into the, the 4A power channel on board the station. And so he's getting these into essentially their, their initial connection point. He's going to tie them down using some wire ties and some other harnesses uh, to secure these so they're not just kind of floating around freely making sure he's leaving enough slack for the eventual connection themselves. Uh, these won't get connected to the to the arrays themselves until we're in an eclipse, as uh, being out of direct sunlight is the uh, primary inhibit for making sure that the solar arrays aren't generating electricity uh, and we're not plugging into something actively generating. So um, at some point we will have to, to wait for an eclipse. We are timed uh, to hopefully hit that. Uh, pretty pretty much on the money uh, as we plan out all the other activities um, as this is now the second one of these installs uh, that this pair of crew members has done completing their last one in just a little over seven hours uh, this today a planned seven hour spacewalk at which point we're right now we are 50 minutes and 40 seconds into still in the first major task so and while Frank Rubio is working on this cable routing, uh, Josh Cassida over uh, at the FSE getting ready to release uh, what's known as the ARDS, the anti-rotation devices. In terms of where you're going to put that two-inch, uh, your trash bag or on the socket caddy, it's your call. It's got to be one of those two, is that right? Yeah, copy. That, that's uh, your two choices. So he's going to have two of these. There's too much in the uh, trash bag, so I'll have to put it on the circuit kitty. He's going to have two of these ARDs to release. And he's got to attach some tethers to them as uh, these ones are not what's called captive bolts. So captive bolt, once you, captive bolt, once you unscrew it, it, it stays in kind of a captive fitting. In this case, these don't have it. So he's going to be uh, attaching a tether to them to make sure he captures them and they can then uh, bring them in his bag and not just let them float off. Uh, in the meantime, he's also breaking out that, that PGT, the pistol grip tool, making sure he has the right socket size on it. And then we'll hear the call out of the different settings that he's going to be using before he starts uh, using that to drive some of these bolts and release these anti-rotation devices. Get pull test on the removal. Copy, Josh. Get pull test on the install. That's good news. And uh, so, Josh, you're going to translate over to the Charlie 12 bolt, and that's near Stanchion Alpha. Hey, that. It seems like you're making pretty good time over there. Going on. Uh, I was, and then I saved each other on other planes when I just got it uh, messed up, so I'm probably uh, just back to normal timeline here. Okay. Uh, that's good. And you guys are both making great progress, so no rush. Thank you, Nick. Station on three for Robo. Koichi, he's in 513, go ahead. I'm looking at the um, SSC20. This is the um, Hecla camera split screen views, but on the left side I see a uh, nice Hecla view, but the right side the split, split screen view shows no WDS video and uh, we don't see any uh, EV camera views as expected. Hey, 
Hey, Nick, after I have one wire tied down with three turns, can I release my rack cable? And Koichi, we copy. Uh, we think we'll need to get uh, And Frank, you, you need to have two wire ties uh, with three twists holding really down, down the cable to release your red. So we need you to, to put it under that next wire tie. Okay. Okay, Nick, let's talk about ARD. I see AR3 here at C12. Okay, copy that. And uh, so you'll attach your adjustable um, from your trash bag to that ARD tether point, and then when you're ready, I've got TGT settings for you. That's great. And just a reminder that tether point is not the long lanyard, it's the, the physical metal tether point. Thank you. my adjustable on it and that adjustable is ready back to my mini workstation and I will go for my PGT. Copy Josh. And Nick, uh, well, I guess we'll see. I was going to ask if it's going to, that tab's going to move out of the way. I need to reach in there and persuade it, but I think it might want to go once we go kind of clockwise a little bit. Yep, you're thinking the same thing uh, that, that I am. Uh, there's no spring loading or anything, so when you loosen it up, uh, if it doesn't rotate out of its way, you may have to nudge it. Okay, we are open up and calibrated. Copy, Josh. So it's going to be Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Okay, I got Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. That's a good read back. This is the one at 6 to 10. Six to ten turns. Yep, yeah, yeah. Six to ten turns. Uh, you're going just to loosen it. Uh, don't exceed those ten. It's not captive. And like those uh, cables are in place. I had to disconnect the cables because uh, just to kind of undo the rat's nest that it formed. But uh, do you want me to connect them back? They both look like they're in a good configure. And that's a negative, Frank. Uh, we were we were expecting them to be disconnected anyway, so it's in a good config. Got it. All right, great. I counted ten. She don't see revolutions on that. I see torque, low torque, but I don't see number of revolutions. But I counted ten. And, and that's expected, Josh, so uh, hopefully that block is loosened up and you're able to rotate it out of the way. Let's see. Uh, 
Sonic, the uh, on the left, soft capture features. Uh, the centermost one is engaged in the proper config. Again, kind of medium fiction. And then the left one is uh, in the capture, or correction, in the uh, engaged position. So I'm going to go ahead and cycle that one, and also set it in the right position. Copy all, Frank. Thanks. And all three soft captures are in the proper container. Copy, Frank. Next for ARD. With you, Josh. Next. Yeah, so I can see uh, pretty good play there with the tab and the washers. Is that what you expect? Didn't go too far, I don't think. It is out of the way now. Yep, if it's loosened, you should be able to pull that, uh, if you can reach that lanyard, uh, that's there to assist you in the reach. I understand that. I was seeing a pretty good uh, length on there with some washers that are free, but I mean, they're contained. They're just uh, sliding up and down, but we got it. ARD is removed. And I'm going to get set up for driving it back in. And we can see it just floating there in the center. That was one of those two ARDs anti-rotation devices that Josh Cassidy is working on removing. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio is still over at the work site preparing for the arrival of the IRO. So routing those cables, he also cycled through uh, the three soft capture devices. There's three. They'll look very similar to handles when you see them uh, on your screen that are uh, once the iris is uh, slid into place, those handles will engage and will have a soft capture. So that just helps to maintain an alignment and then allows uh, these crew members to drive the eight mounting brackets that will securely fasten the iris uh, uh, onto that mounting station. And we are a little over an hour and two minutes into today's spacewalk. Again, everything kicked off at 7.19 a.m. Central when the crew switch over to their battery power on their spacesuits. Still in the first primary task uh, right now, one of two anti-rotation devices over uh, holding the iroses in place has been removed. Josh Castro working on removing number two. Uh, meanwhile, Frank Rubio working on securing uh, those power cables that are going to get connected after the IROSA is secured in place. Also making sure that the soft capture system is ready um, for its arrival. After he's complete, he's going to start translating back over uh, to where Josh Cassa is working uh, at the IROSA itself on that temporary stove site that uh, flight support equipment area uh, where we can see Casta working right here. Then the two are going to work to release uh, a pair of beams. There are um, beams laying perpendicular across the uh, IROSA itself. Those have been in place uh, to help hold them throughout all of the launch uh, and arrival. And those are going to get removed. And then, and then after that, we'll be able to start actually relocating uh, this IROSA over to its ultimate install site. In order to do that, Josh Casta is going to get into a foot restraint on the robotic arm. Copy, Josh. That's a good bolt. Uh, so we're going to translate over to C11, which is uh, stanchion delta. And I see why we only got four, if you guys can see it in the heck of it. I'm happy with this config. It definitely is not going anywhere. No, we're we're yeah, happy. Right yeah, Josh, we're happy with the config. We can't see it. Uh, the HECA, just for your SA, uh, is it got a face full of IROSA. What happened is the bolt. Uh, I'm sorry, the block is rotated counterclockwise, and when I went to drive it back in, it just catches on the. It is caught on the uh, lip of the C12. It is definitely in there and not going anywhere. Copy all. Uh, everybody on the ground is happy. Like Sounds good. Sounds like just like uh, what happened to me there, Josh. Oh, it did. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. Last time. And Frank, I see you making uh, making headway with the uh, left wire harness. I found it.
And so in this split screen view, we're looking over the shoulder of Frank Rubio on the left there, EV1 for today's spacewalk. On the right, that's Josh Cassidy, EV2. Again, they're at separate locations right now going through these uh, first major tasks of getting this new rollout solar array installed. Frank Rubio now working to secure uh, one of the wire bundles uh, using a number of wire ties. He's going to be attaching these to different handrails. Um, and this is just to keep those cables secure. He's going to make sure he has enough slack built into that for the ultimate connections that these are going to make um, to the uh, the mounting bracket area and then ultimately down. Struggle with the, uh, the lanyards and explains why Frank decided to break his last time. <laughs> it definitely crossed my mind. Oh my god, you think I was premeditated? Just so long, this air deed, etc. Yeah. Um. I'm going to be really deliberate about what I loosen, release. It's going to be hand that adjustable that is anchored on my main workstation. It will tether point out the red that goes to it. I think um, before I leave the work site here, uh, left cable bundle is down and wire tied in two locations. Um, I can see that we have good reach uh, to the bracket location here, and the two sides uh, are engaged. And then I have three soft captures in the proper location. Uh, anything else you need me to do here? Yeah, and uh, and Frank, if you can uh, just confirm that the MLI is kind of clear, that uh, plane on top of the mod kit, uh, make sure there's no interference there. You probably have good eyes for that. Otherwise, let's head back to the cable bag. Okay. And I see good constraint for MLI both sides. Good news. All right, well, coming up on one hour, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk, just heard some good reports out from Frank Rubio, EV1 for today. Right now he's over at the ultimate install point for the IROSA, securing two different uh, cables that we have. Uh, each of these is essentially going to be a wide jumper connecting uh, the newly installed IROSA and the legacy solar array down uh, into the power channel itself. So as part of the preparation work, he's been securing those cables.
bag is closed, and then you're going to translate inboard to the port seat of cart and uh, link back up with Josh for the FSC. Okay. Uh, can we just leave it open because we're going to be uh, putting the, uh, the market back in here later? Can I at least just use a Velcro? It, just Velcro. You don't have to use straps to keep it closed, but we'd like to have the top on it. Copy that. Mike, we're going to try to keep that from happening this time. Um, Sounds like I understand we're doing Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Those are good settings. Six to ten turns. I do have my adjustable on the ARD. And copy. And we can see it in your HECA. And right now, Frank Rubio making his way over to join Josh Cassida at this FSE where the solar array is currently stowed. Cassida working to remove uh, that second anti-rotation device, and then once that's out, he'll be done with that task. He'll, so he'll swap out one of the sockets on his pistol grip tool before they get ready uh, to remove the support beams. Copy 10 turns, Josh. And we'll we'll be able to see these support beams once we get into their helmet cam. You can actually see a little bit from this view uh, in the lower left-hand corner. If you see that white bar that's going across the upper part of the array, uh, running left to right, um, that is one of the two support beams holding IROSA in place uh, on this transporter. And those are both going to get released before we can roll the IROSA out of its temporary spot. And as our bag is closed, everything's inside. I'm ready to search and bring it back. Copy, Frank. Uh, thanks for doing that for us. And uh, so you're going to head back in, uh, port C to cart, and then you're going to go to stanchion alpha on the FSC, and then I'll have uh, words for you there. And Josh, uh, got a good video of uh, both ARDs released. I'll try to keep them out of the way. I don't see a way of anchoring them now. And I'm going to get them tangled up again. Yep, understand. We're going to offload those as soon as we can. And then with that view and those words, both of the ARDs, the anti-rotation devices holding...
have the green light. So I'd say four turns have barely moved, and I'm showing 11.8 on the torque. Copy, Josh. That's a good bolt. Um, so you're good to uh, stow that PGT. Um, and actually, if you, you don't have to stow it, you're going to translate over to crew lock back T. You're going to get rid of the yards into uh, crew lock back T and then do a socket swap. Okay, understood. Um. And Frank, I see you uh, up on the FSC, uh, so we want to make sure that we're not translating both at the same time. Copy that. And I am over by Bravo. Copy, Frank. And uh, when Josh, if you hold your position there, Frank, when Josh gets over by uh, the crew lock back tango, I'm going to have you move over to Alpha, and we've got some steps to release some bolts. Okay, copy. You want who to hold position? Yep, uh, Frank, you hold position. Josh is picking up his BRT and translating. Once he's in a position, then I'll, I'll get you over to Alpha and we'll get you settings for the PGT. Hey, copy. Frank, I'm moving. All right, well, at this point in the spacewalk, one hour, 17 minutes, five seconds in. I'm translating your go. Okay, and I have alpha. Okay, copy that, Frank. Uh, so you can uh, head over to alpha, and uh, we're going to drive bolt C7 and C8 on that FSC beam. So once you're in a good position, I'll uh, give you the PGT settings. And, Josh, you're looking to get rid of those ARDs. Uh, with the uh, adjustable and the uh, and the red, and then also you're going to swap back to that two-inch rigid. Understood. All right, and I'm at Alpha. Good uh, buckle down. Okay, copy that, Frank. And so you're looking for Charlie 7 and Charlie 8 bolts on the top of the beam, uh, and you're going to release those. Okay. It's a Bravo 7 setting, so you won't have a good position. Okay. Oh, got another set of arts here to deal with. few views of planet Earth from Frank Rubio's helmet cam, the station just flying uh, just to the south of Liberia, and just making a pass over Western Africa as we're one hour, 18 minutes, 40 seconds in. That went to an adjustable, and that adjustable went to the previous set of ours, but I'm just seeing them go to an adjustable that goes to a wrench and the ours. I'm just looking for my anchor point for the uh, for my deposit here. Yep, understand. And you're go to use any uh, other point that you can find. So the first major task complete for both of these spacewalkers. Frank Rubio successfully setting up cables. Okay, Frank, it's Bravo Seven counterclockwise two. Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, copy. And you're going to release to 8 to 11 turns. Okay, doesn't matter which one I do first. Order doesn't matter. Okay. okay. Looks like my ARD, other is connected to a different adjustable that's in there, but it's not the one that has the ARDs on it before. So 
I'm going to go ahead and stuff that in and release my red. And we're good with that. And make uh, Charlie 8 is released, 9 turns. Copy, 9 turns, good release on Charlie 8. And again, Frank Rubio completed his first major task of the day. He's now over at the iRosa getting ready to release some of these beams. We hear him working with his PGT, his pistol grip tool. That's the drill that they're able to manipulate bolts. You're hearing different callouts. Copy 10 turns, good release on C7. Frank is gonna need to get into the strategy, is that correct? That is, that is correct. Um, and, and Josh, you don't have to worry about the lanyards themselves. The white cables can hang out of the bag. Yeah, I think they might be in a snag hazard, but they're in now. Frank, I'm going to switch over to my fire and start working on some beams. Now this view, we see both of our space walkers for today. Frank Rubio on the right in the suit with red stripes. Josh Cassid on the left. Working right now to rotate two support beams that are currently holding the solar array in place. That's a good pull test and tip tens in on Charlie 2. Uh, you're also going to retrieve the uh, red and adjustable from the trash bag and, and hook that on to the uh, closest beam handrail stanchion. And so they're going to be working in tandem. They're going to go to four different spots. Each spot has two bolts that are holding these beams in place. Using their pistol grip tools, they're going to release these bolts, eventually rotating these beams about 90 degrees and then putting them back in place so they can get iRosa out of the FSE, this uh, flight support equipment holder. You're going to hear them get different settings called up on that pistol grip tool. It has, you'll hear a letter and a number, in this case, be Bravo 7. We have A1 through 7 and B1 through 7 that just tells you how much torque you're using. A1, the least torque. Bravo 7, the most torque. And you'll also hear a direction clockwise or counterclockwise. 
counterclockwise, just like down here on Earth, we're loosening. Your next action at the top of the stanchion, Charlie, is going to be putting that tip pin in, in Charlie 1. Understood. Thanks. Uh, just big picture, we're doing great on time uh, relative to the eclipse, so uh, everything's on track. All right, good to know. Thanks, Thanks. Hour 26 minutes into today's spacewalk station, just about to fly over the very southern tip of South Africa. Both spacewalkers now working in tandem to release these support beams holding the IROSA in place. Sorry, put a BRT down. No. Um, I'm trying a good spot for that. We're going to need it. Looking now through Josh Cassidy's helmet cam. Uh, when he gets back up top, we'll, we'll get a view of the support beams that they're working on releasing. Again, they're going to, to four different points. Each point has two different bolts. They're going to release each of those bolts. Each beam is going to get rotated about 90 degrees to get it out of the way. And there you can see the beam that they're working on. The order is not going to matter. Um, it's Bravo 7 counterclockwise, too. And that, that Bravo 7 telling you how much torque they're using. In this case, they're using the maximum amount of torque uh, that this PGT can put out, about 25 and a half pounds of, uh, 25 and a half foot pounds of torque. Moving it counterclockwise, and it can also control the rotational speed. Nine on one and ten on the other. And I got eight to 11, the range. You are ready, that's two. I am. Mine are still, mine are still uh, installed. Both my bolts. And Frankie must have heard us talking about you because you're good to drive your bolts as well. Okay, that'll be it. Ten turns, C3 is popped out. Copy, ten turns on C3, good release. Can you verify settings for please? And Frank, it's Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2. Thank you. All right, same on C4. Some turns and it's ball fill. Copy 10, C4, good release. And so, Frank, you're going to work on those two uh, bolts. Uh, when you release the last one, it will be free from the FSC. Charlie 5 is released, uh, 9 turns. Copy 9 turns, good release on Charlie 5. 
And Josh, once you've got your PGT stowed, uh, you're going to translate over to stanchion alpha, Charlie to delta to alpha. And at this point, three of the four bolts holding one of the support arms, support beams have been released. Frank Rubio working on the fourth one. Josh Cassis is going to move over uh, to a different point on the FSE to help with uh, the actual rotation. And it looks like that first beam is now free. Copy, Josh. And Frank, we see good release on the beam. Copy. Yeah, you want to check the body coming free. There we go, this uh, helmet cam looking from Frank Rubio. You can see he's just rotated that beam just initially. Frank, Frank, you're good just to uh, to hold the beam there. Josh will be there in a second to lend a hand so we can get it strapped down with the adjustables. Rush. So one of the two support beams removed. Frank Rubio is just going to hold it in place here until Josh Casta gets into position and they can start to uh, essentially lock it back down. Hey, Frank. Hi. Here, I'm not your chief. You need me to uh, hustle. Thanks. You can poke it for a second, I can get my red on it. Yep, I got it. Do you want to hold it? Okay, thanks. Copy, 
Nick, you concur. I'm headed over to Delta now. Affirm. Those are the last two bolts holding down that beam. Just let me know when you're there and I'll go over to Charlie. So, stand by. All right, one hour, 36 minutes into today's spacewalk, continuing to check through. We're pretty much right on the timeline so far. Frank Rubio, Josh Cassida working to uh, finish removing these two support beams uh, that have been. Uh, that is a heck of a video. I'm not going to want to put that. Yeah, wow. Well, and we're back with you guys, Joyce. Good job on getting through it. Copy. Frank has just repositioned over to Charlie. I'm at Delta. I've got my workstation uh, RET on uh, the handrail that's closest to C9. Copy all. Uh, that's good config. Uh, let me know when you're ready for PGT settings. Hey, Nick, I am ready. Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. We'll be in C10 and C9. Again, I'm ready to it. Um, yeah, with what you said, Frank, I'm going to expect it to kind of pop off. Yeah, it just floats right away. So I guess I'll just let my PGT float. But that's what I had to do. Yes. Yep. And copy, we see a good release. Thank you. And so the next step, guys, is you're going to move that into position and you're going to hand start C9 and C7. Uh, recommend that one of you secure it in place and the uh, other one hand start, so do it uh, sequentially. I'm in a fairly good position here. Do you want me to start? Go for it. Sounds great. I can stabilize it. And with the second beam now removed, they're going to temporarily stow it. This time, instead of using the tethers, they're going to hand start uh, those bolts back into the uh, support brackets. But again, with with the two beams out of the way, it looks like we got one good hand start. 
got it stable if you want. But all this work being done to get these beams out of the way to give us some clearance to get Irosa off of its temporary holding spot. Two turns. Okay. Okay, guys. So you're going to... Okay, we have two turns on 709. Yep. Copy. Uh, so for both of you, uh, PGT settings are going to be Alpha 6, Clockwise 2. Alpha 6, Clockwise 2. That's a good read back, Frank. Uh, and just Copy. a reminder... Alpha 6. Yeah, and a reminder, we're going to drive 21 turns. We're going to stop on turns. Uh, and then we're going to change the PGT settings and finish the torque. Copy. All right, 21 turns are back. Can we both go for those 21? And, and you're both go to drive simultaneously. Can we both drive? Okay. All right. Copy that. And Alpha 6, box on is 2. We'll try not to count out that, Frank. <laughs> Same. And it's starting turns. All right, we will get video back in just a couple of minutes, but right now they're driving a couple of bolts to get that second support beam uh, held in place a little bit more securely. After that, I torqued out. Yeah, I torqued out in like five turns. Six and a half for EV2. Uh, Nick, I torqued out at uh, five turns. Copy all, hand over. And so just there we heard um, them getting a little bit fewer turns than we were expecting. We were expecting about 21 turns, so they got uh, just about five. So the team's now going to what's called a crib sheet, basically your backup procedures. And Frank, Josh, back with you after the handover. We've got voice only. Copy, uh, we both torqued out. I was at five turns, Josh was at six turns. Six and a half, three, two. Okay, copy that, guys. Uh, so we're in a we're in a crib sheet page here. So uh, we're going to up the torque setting. Uh, so new settings are going to be Bravo seven, clockwise two. Bravo seven, clockwise two. Copy. Yep, and that's Sorry. Bravo seven, <laughs> counterclockwise two. Counterclockwise two. Verify counterclockwise. Guys, it's Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Josh, you're going to do 15 and a half turns. Frank, you're going to do 17 turns. We're trying to get a total of 22 turns. Copy. Hey, give me two copies. All right, so you heard additional settings called up. Again, both crew members using their PGT, the pistol grip tool. And going for 17 turns. Those are good words, Frank. And again, those first values. That Bravo 7, just referring to how much torque we're using now. And we're back with you on HECA. A1 through 7 and Bravo 1 through 7. A1 the lowest, Bravo 7 the highest, and so we've essentially put the drill up to its max torque, more than 25 foot-pounds of torque, up from about the 8 that they were initially using, so this just, if we didn't get the turns we wanted, we up the torque, now the team's working the crew members through. At 14.7 turns and it torqued out, an actual 23.7. Copy, Josh. Let us talk I about it. First, we counted 15. I counted 15, and the PGT says 
Next for me, I had 17 turns, green lights, 25 decimal four on the torque. You also start that? Uh, yeah, that's the final torque, yep. I got the 17 turns, which that was the, uh, the goal, I think. Yep, copy what you, copy your call down, Frank, and uh, we're just confirming down here that we're happy with both of those bolts. Uh, and do they look like they're flush, uh, fully installed? Yes, sir. one affirmative. Copy all that. Solid. Yep. Uh, there's a tiny little black line under um, the head of the bolt, and mine is flush with the canister. Copy. Thanks for the words. We're chatting. Hey guys, if you're able, uh, while we're sitting here waiting, if you wanted to do a glove and half check. Okay. Gloves are easy to, no changes. And a dry hat. Copy, Josh. And Nick, uh, I moved my TCV from six to four uh, when you were um, more or less the last time. Copy the change. Thanks, Frank. Hey, Nick, while you guys are talking about it, uh, if needed, could I finish that bolt and Josh can get going to the uh, arm-ups? Hey, 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 Frank, we've got the uh, words for you guys. So what we want to do is is finish on a lower torque. So um, we're going to have you go Bravo 7 counterclockwise 2 and release the bolts one turn, and then we're going to reseat them with a lower torque setting. Frank, so it's okay to just continue to work this together. Okay, copy that. Hey, I copy Bravo, seven, counterclockwise, two for one turn. Those are good words. Bravo, seven, counterclockwise, two, one turn. All right, so both crew members now, they were able to get these bolts in place, but hit what is called essentially a hard stop. Um, so not wanting to wanting to have overdriven these bolts in and leaving them in at too high of a torque, they're going to back them out. One, to drive in. turn on fairly nice. Copy, Josh. So the new settings for the PGT to drive it in are alpha six, clockwise two. Alpha. Good read back. And so instead of leaving these bolts driven in with more than 25 foot pounds of torque, leaving a lot of potential energy in if we're hard stopped, we're backing them out, dropping it down to a lower torque setting, that alpha four, which gives about six pounds of uh, torque. And then they're going to reseat them, have these bolts securely in place, and we'll be able to continue on. Copy, Frank. Uh, did you get a good green light? Affirmative. I have a green light. Decimal four on the torque. And no turns. 
Thank you. Save. Copy for both Capital of you. Um, if you can uh, hold, we're still discussing. Okay. I have not tried my net mix. Um, I'm IPGT power down right as it was about to start. Do you want me to give it a shot at Alpha 6? Okay, Josh, Frank, appreciate your patience. Uh, what we'd like to do is change up the torque setting. So alpha seven clockwise two, we're gonna reattempt uh, and uh, and then we'll discuss. Okay, and Nick, for EV2, I think you missed my last call. I never attempted alpha six, my PGT powered down right as I started. Um, you want me to try alpha six first or go straight to alpha seven? You can go straight to alpha seven. Seven it is. Now the same results. Uh, green light, nine decimal eight from the torque. Uh, one six turns. Copy, Frank. And same for EV2, it's a point one four. And copy, and uh, can we get the torque reading? 9.0 actual for EV2. A green light. Copy, Josh. Thanks. Okay, guys, uh, we're happy with this for now. Um, so we've got to, uh, Josh, you're gonna move on to the SSRMS setup. Uh, Frank, you're gonna work on releasing C bolts. We've gotta stagger our translations here. Um, so Josh, uh, if you want to stow your PGT and then you're gonna translate to the ingress location uh, via stanchion alpha down to the, uh, the phase one. Um, my PGT is still I'm grabbing my ret off of the beam, and I will make my way back to the SSRMS. Let's try to be on. Yeah, see you in a minute. Here. All right, Nick, I'll go to the bag for my, uh... I think we have to start our translation. Oh, okay. yeah, right.
One hour, 54 minutes, 30 seconds into today's spacewalk, the second major activity of the day complete. So, so far we've continued to get all the work sites ready for the eventual move and install of this uh, rollout solar array. Frank Rubio started by routing the power cables that we're going to be connecting a little bit later on in the spacewalk. While Josh Cassida got the uh, various support equipment ready for Frank, removal okay so we can release Irosa from its current staging uh, point. So at this point, that's complete, and so after working together hey, sir, to get those beams released and moved to their temp uh, location, we will be here at the end of the day, the, uh, five, eight, um, so we might have some additional bolt operations at the very end as we're doing the final cleanup, but now those in a position to give us plenty of clearance to get IROSA out of its temporary storage location. And Josh, in terms of mile marker for the ingress uh, position here, uh, looking at uh, 10,200. Great. Thank you for that, so right now, Josh Cassidy, EV2, is going to be making his way to the robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2, and he's going to be working Frank, with an okay EPFR, an articulating portable foot restraint. Down he's down going to be go. tethering and then locking himself into that foot restraint. Uh, that robotic arm is going to be controlled by the crew. So after working the other to get and those Koichi beams Wakata, released and moved and to their temp so location, be that will be method. here at the end of the day. Um, so we might have some additional bolt operations at the very end as we're doing the final cleanup, but for now those in a position to give us plenty of clearance to get IROSA out of its temporary storage location. And Josh, in terms of mile marker for the ingress uh, position here, uh, looking at uh, 10,200. Sounds great. Thank you for that, sir. So right now, Josh Cassidy, EV2, is going to be making his way to the robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2, and he's going to be working with an APFR, an articulating portable foot restraint. He's going to be tethering and then locking himself into that foot restraint. Uh, that robotic arm is going to be controlled by the crew still inside station, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata, and he's going to be using that method to remove the IROSA from its flight support equipment location and then get flown over with IROSA, which weighs about 750 pounds, uh, over to the install location. Now while he's getting into the robotic arm, Frank Rubio EV-1 for today still has a couple more bolt operations to get IROSA ready to come off. He's going to go and release what's known as C-bolts. There's two of these. Uh, and these are essentially the last thing that are holding IROSA in place um, to that uh, to the FSE. So after these are removed, they'll be ready to get IROSA off and on its way to the install location. I know I have a good pocket drop to hold us. And copy that, Frank. Uh, so you're going to translate this stanchion alpha. We're looking for to work on Charlie 12. Okay. I break in here real quick, Nick. I'm at 10020. It looks like I'm pretty far starboard. I think I want to be port and uh, have the arm come in, if you agree. And, and, the roll yeah, pedal's going to be on that side as well. You bet, and uh, checking. I'm sorry, you said 10200, 10,200. That makes a lot more sense. Yep, now we're on the same sheet. So 10200. All right, Frank, how are you doing on calm? You need to be calm? Uh, no, hey, so Nick, uh, I'll take settings. Uh, for Charlie 12, and I'll uh, go over there and do one turn. Come on. Yep, copy, Frank. Uh, it's Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2, and it's just brake torque. You don't even have to do a full turn. Okay, copy that. All right, take that again, please. Bravo 3, counter 2. Bravo 
Four three counter two. Copy, thanks. Gosh, I'm good. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. M two EV two. Go ahead, Josh. Richie, we are ready to start the GC to publish with the APSR reconfig position. Okay. Josh, we will move you to the uh, position, which will be uh, stationed aft towards the truss of one meter. In uh, standby, we're setting up. Copy. And hearing Koichi Wakata calling in now from the inside of the station, he and Nicole Mann at the robotics workstation, they're going to be moving uh, the robotic arm into position for Josh Cassida to start uh, getting into that foot restraint. You'll hear them use the acronym GCA quite a bit. GCA stands for Ground Controlled Assist. That's essentially the term we're using. So this station after towards the trust one meter. Are you ready? Ready for motion. Here comes the motion. Three, two, one. And we can see right in the center there the robotic arm starting to move. You can see jutting out of the right side. That's the foot restraint that Cassidy is going to be locking into. And again, GCA just down stands stands for ground controlled assist. That's Pro. 
left. And Joan Foxtrot, Foxtrot. So I'm going to roll it to Delta. And then it was on a uh, tether swap. So in this view, Frank, your choice whether you want to go the long way or the short way around the FSC. Okay, yeah, I guess it's uh, up to go. We can see Frank Rubio on the bottom left. He's working to break torque uh, and then release two bolts that are still holding Irosa in place. On the right side, Josh Casada working to reconfigure the APFR there, articulating portable foot restraint. Uh, we heard a couple of values being called out to him, numbers, Foxtrot, Delta. Those are uh, just telling him which settings to set uh, the yaw pitch and roll of the foot restraint. Um, these are determined in advance just to put him in the correct orientation for where he's going to need to be to work. Keep close, slide a lot, black on black. Real itself is... Unlocked. Frank, hey Josh, can you turn around and take a quick look? Oh, I think it just broke loose. It did. That's good. In a good way. Um, this was right through on my VRT, so I think we got gate closed, slider lock, black on black. On my left D ring extender there, Nick. So I've got a good safety tether down on the SSR bus. Hey, Josh, the only, um, your, your waist cover is wrapped around the BRT right now. You could probably just like, uh, um, oh, yeah, so that's what happens when I have this thing on the left. I'm going to take it off, my BRT off, and then go over here, see if you agree with this. But you're just going between the two. Perfect. Now you're free. And over here. Yeah. Even those backup cameras on the side. <laughs> and copy, Josh. I see you getting into a good config, and we uh, concur with a good load path. Frank, Josh, um, based on the downlink video, Frank, your your safety tether might be going around your back. I, I don't know if Josh can turn around and put some eyes on and give you some additional guidance. I'm looking. Uh, shoot, I'm in a bad config for it. Yeah, I don't. I believe it is. No, it's a uh, Hold on for a sec. Uh, I can see it coming off your right side. Yep. Um, it does appear to be going between the cliff and the safer at the bottom. Oh, really? Okay. Well, I'm keeping it. Yeah, it is. Um, keep your 
You can tell they're on your. You can tell they're on your. My right side. Yeah. So it is. So your reel is on your left, and the tether itself is one right between the cliff and the safer. You know, at the bottom, in a small, yeah. small of your back. So my recommendation would be pointing your feet. Uh, let's see. This is. Yeah. Point your feet back that way. And then feet rotating to your left. Keep going. Yeah, it's still hooked in there. Um, you essentially need to go 360 degrees get back where you are now. Just tell me if it's getting better. Feels like it's uh, pulling on yeah, there. Yeah. It's, the thing is, it's caught in that, in that crease. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to talk you through this. Um, okay. Hold on right there. Is. And guys, we're, we're okay if you guys want to try to translate uh, to close the gap between each other. Uh, if you wanted to go over towards Stanchion Alpha, Frank, and Josh, if you wanted to move over towards the TFR on the CETA cart just to close the gap and be able to help put some hands on for assistance. Yep. Understood. Well, keep doing that. Let's flip your feet up towards the tower. Keep, keep going towards the tower. Now you got it. Now look over to your left. Should see they hate each other. Oh, you gotta be kidding! There it is. It was kind of All right, thanks, man. You got it. Nicely done. Thanks, Ted. We appreciate nice it. Nice work, guys. Yeah, we'll be undoing Tether's nose all day. <laughs> okay, so um, we're good on the 55 foot, Nick. Um, I'll go back uh, to the station and drop off my red hook, if you agree. Yep, we concur. Uh, you've got a good 55 foot. Just let us know where you drop your red hook on the uh, station. And checking in both crew members continuing to get ready to move this IROS of this rollout solar array. Josh Casta working to continue outfitting and getting that foot restraint ready. And meanwhile, Frank Rubio working on uh, releasing those two bolts. Yeah, for C11, it's going to be Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Copy. All right, red reel is now locked. I'm going to grab my red hook and release it from my right D ring extender. Copy, Josh. And for Rubio, he's working on two different bolts C11, C12. These are the last two bolts uh, that are going to be holding IROSA in place. And reel is unlocked. Copy, Josh. Okay, Nick, uh, I know you can preach you're good with it. Are you okay with the ingress of the APFR? And that's affirmative. Uh, you're, that's the next step for you. Uh, Frank, you've got those settings, Bravo 3, counter 2. Uh, you're releasing approximately 27 okay. turns on C11. Okay. 
Tom's are yours, Josh. Hey, I think we're in a good, config, uh, good spot here. Um, and Nick, do you have a good view of the APFR itself by chance? I only ask because it's really sensitive and raw, and I just want to make sure we don't bump it. Yeah, we don't have a really great view of the uh, the boot plate itself. Uh, the views are pretty dark. Yeah, it looks like your feet are just below the boot plate. Sorry, which side of the boot plate? Below and based on the view, it looks like uh, left foot is under the left side, so it looks like it's aligned. There you go. Okay. How you doing? Good. I got 27 turns on probably 11. Okay. Copy, Frank. That's good. Uh, that's what we're doing back. for now. You're going to head back to crew lock back T and retrieve the square scoop and uh, the long duration tie down tether from the tower handrail. Station, he's on space to ground like three the for APFR. robotics. Your go Sorry, for the task without correcting the additional GCA. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, what do you need? Uh, just confirmation that these fields, where I think they are. Okay, uh, pull up. My right doesn't feel quite right. My left feels good. Yeah, your left is good. Your right is on top. Pull up. Oh, still. I think you might just be too deep on your toe. Okay, you're in, pull up. Okay, I think we got it. Awesome, thanks. Yep. Okay, let me make sure I got all my tethers off the station. Okay, I got my ingress aid in. You need the comm? Uh, I'm good. Yeah, okay. I'll grab the uh, scoop and the uh, long duration and head over to Charlie 12. Okay, I'm not sure if they're going to need a GCA or if they can maneuver. Them to the maneuver. Okay. Wasn't sure if you could start from this position, but if you can, Breachy, I am uh, go for the maneuver to the truss back off position. Okay, uh, we copy that. And this is the uh, maneuver, not this is the uh, maneuver, not GCA, to the published truss back off position, which is uh, body out or station forward in one meter. Are you ready? DQ's ready. Sitting at the manual now. Okay. Okay, Josh, uh, we are ready for the uh, maneuver to the uh, thrust back of position, 1.3 meters, uh, body out. Uh, here comes the motion, three, two, one, arms in motion. It's a good motion. Please. Take EV2 to set TCV to 2.5. Copy, Josh, 2.5. Position hold, and then we will set up a carrier lineup joint. Okay. 
EV2 is ready for that showcast. Okay, how are you setting up? And Josh, I see you're working your socket swap. That was the next step. Sounds good, thanks. Two hours, 20 minutes into today's spacewalk, getting a view. We see Josh Cassidy up there in the upper right. He is locked in and tethered now to the foot restraint on the robotic arm, being driven around now by the crew inside the station, Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio in the suit with the red stripes. He's EV-1 today, working on getting the final bolts holding the Irosa in place released. He's going to wait until Josh Cassidy is in place and ready to receive uh, before he releases that final bolt holding Irosa into the FSE, that uh, temporary stowage location. Now, after they're able to get these bolts undone and Irosa out, they're going to maneuver it over to the work site. They're going to do that uh, by hand, essentially. Hey Josh, we're ready for the three minute showcast. This is to pitch you up 90 degrees and translate you to the nadir of the IROSA. Are you ready for the motion? So I'm going to pitch head up. Is that correct? Yes, uh, pitch up uh, 90 degrees and translate you to the nadir of the IROSA. Understood. Okay. Give me cues ready. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. I see good motion. Josh. I had a good pull test on uh, both sockets and the install. Copy, copy all, Josh. Good socket swap. If you can um, cycle your WVS for us, uh, we're trying to get that to lock back up to help Koichi with some camera views. Okay, it's on now. Okay, thanks for that, Josh. We'll uh, we'll look at it and uh, let you know if we need anything else. And Frank, I see you moving over to uh, Stanchion Alpha uh, towards C12. So a short handover, we'll get that video back momentarily. Meanwhile, Josh Cassida fixed to the top of the space station's robotic arm. He's getting maneuvered into place. And Josh Frank, back with you after a short handover. And Josh Frank, uh, right behind you, Frank. Uh, we're back with you now uh, after a handover. Uh, we've got voice. Right. Nick, I was just curious, do you expect the translation over to P4 to be uh, inflation or eclipse mostly? Uh, 
uh, and Josh, uh, you should start in sunlight. You're going to finish in eclipse, so it's a little bit of both. Okay, sounds good. Josh, uh, arm is in position hold. Uh, we are setting up for manual to the uh, IROSA retrieval position. Okay, you have a go to for the manual maneuver to the IROSA retrieval position, and Frank, I'm just off your right shoulder. Yep, I see you, thanks. Okay. We are setting up the arm now. That's good. Frank, I'll take settings for Charlie 12. You bet. It's Bravo 3, counterclockwise 3. Bravo 3, counterclockwise 3, and I am releasing this all the way out, 27 of this, or correction, 54 turns, correct? That's affirmative. Full release, 54 turns. You're going to, the bolt will spring out when released. So our lead spacewalker for the day, Frank Rubio, still at it, releasing those final two bolts. They're C-11 and C-12. He took C-11 about halfway out, now taking C-12 all the way out. We won't take C-11 all the way out and thus release IROSA until Josh Cassida is in place and ready to manually receive it. He's then going to be flown with IROSA over to the, the work site on the P-4 truss area. Yeah, Josh, manual mode uh, is set, and this is the uh, maneuver per your GCA to the published IROSA retrieval position, which is a body in towards IROSA at 1.5 meters. Are you ready? Stand by. You need to calm. Okay. We're ready, GCA, to publish for IROSA retrieval. Okay. Here comes the motion in three, two, one. Starting the motion. Take your motion. Okay, good motion. Not a meter to go. Copy. Looking over the shoulder of Josh Cassid as he moves in, Irosa right in the center of his view. Frank Rubio appearing upside down in the top right, getting that final bolt. Or rather, that C-12 bolt all the way out. He's then going to move over to get C-11 after uh, Josh is fully in position and ready to grapple with Irosa. Copy. And I ended up with uh, 55 turns. Stand by. Both correct. Sorry about that. Continue. Continue. Continue another 10 centimeters. Another 10 centimeters. Ramp out in three. I think we ramped out. Uh, ramped out. Okay, yes. That's it. ECA. ECA complete. This, this uh, position will work great. Copy that, that you have a go for IROSA retrieval. Copy. Go ahead. Sorry about that, Frank. Oh, sorry. I'm, um, I think I have 55 turns on Charlie 12 and is released. Copy 55, full release on Charlie that. 12. And uh, so you're, I see you working to install the scoop uh, with the long duration on that uh, micro square near C12. Let's put it on the long duration, I think. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Not mine. I think that was a plan, right, Nick? Right to the long duration itself? This one? I'm sorry, I should have it. Ready? Awesome. And so this metal device you see Frank Rubio working into the screen there, that's what's called a scoop. We have uh, both square and circle scoops, just depending on what fitting they're attaching to, and we can use them to essentially add temporary handrails, um, handling aids to different payloads, and so he's working on installing that. Three different settings on a scoop. We've got a capture, release, and a lock. So you can see him moving that small 
I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. The video routing, due to the way we have it done in the system for step eight, is a little unique. So we will take care of routing those so parameters for you once you get to step eight, stopping. and then you can take back over with Nancy uh, until it says you I desire. I just guess where that uh, micro chronicle was. Let's copy that. Where that square was, micro square. Oh, okay. So, are, you, are you good, though? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move in another 10. I'm going to get in a GTA. Okay, got it. Can I steal the call? Uh, yep. Hey, Nick, I'm going to translate over to Charlie 11. I'll grab um, scoop and route. Yep. No, that works. Uh, Frank, head over to Charlie 11, and uh, and we see the configuration on the scoop. All good. Uh, Josh, comms are yours. Yep. M2, EV2. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry about that. I couldn't see where the uh, scoop was going to go, and I guessed wrong. So I'm going to need another uh, 15 centimeters of body in. So you guys are ready for a GCA. Yeah, Josh, uh, we need to change the, uh, the command, Frank, so uh, stand by. We'll set it up. Thank you. And, Frank, as you pass the uh, crew lock bag Tango, you'll need to make sure you pick up the square scoop you're going to install. And right now, getting closer to the release of IROSA. Right now, Frank Rubio is moving over to the other side of the FSE. He's going to be releasing a final bolt. And once that's free, uh, they'll be able to get essentially slide IROSA out of that temporary stowage location and uh, begin flying it over. Are we ready for GCA? Ready, GCA. And again, 15 centimeters body in, and I'll call you off. Okay, 50 centimeters of body in. In three. Hold on. What? Am I? And we see Frank Rubio grabbing another one of those scoops. And this is what we can put on things like iRosa to give a, a handle to. Are you ready? Ready to see it. Here comes the motion. In three, two, one, arms in motion. See good motion. Continue. Continue. Fifty centimeters. Continue. And ramp out. Ramping out. ECA complete. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Frank, I see you with the scoop uh, headed out to C11. Um, big picture, we're right on the timeline, so everything's marching along towards our target eclipse. That's great. Okay, while well, you're moving into position, a warning. Uh, this one might be obvious. Uh, don't release C11 until you've got our go, because that will fully release IROSA from the FSC. So, Frank, I see you in position. Uh, now's a good time. Uh, let's do some glove and half checks. Uh, Josh, is this your chance to uh, do a, a once-over? So let's start with glove and half checks. And EV1, with gloves, no changes, and dry hat. For EV2, no changes to the gloves, and dry hat. 
Copy for both of you. Uh, so then, Josh, for you, want to confirm tools and tethers are in a good configuration, clear, that you've got your ingress aid stowed. Tools are in a good config, ingress aid is stowed. And I got rid of a lot of the stuff from my mini workstation. Pretty happy about that. Yeah, you look, you look super clean there. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm in a good config with that. Thanks. Okay, good. Uh, so then looking at the suit, visor, glove heaters, make sure your cooling's where you want it to be, your heels are in, gauntlets are down. Look at that. I think I'm good with this cooling. I did turn on the gloves. I used them for about the first uh, hour or so. They have got pretty warm, but I think they're going to work out well for what we're about to do. And the visor, I guess I'll keep it down since uh, it will probably just end up uh, in eclipse. Okay, copy that. Uh, and then uh, one last chance, if you're in a good position to, to look inside each other's helmets, uh, if you see any signs of water, now's a good time to do it, or to check each other over. Let's see, I can just, I can read this real quick if you want to look in here. Yep, no, it's dry, I don't see any water. It's dry, I don't see any yours. Okay. Um, this rep for the scoop that's gonna go on, can I put this somewhere convenient? Like. Uh, on the stanchion or something? Uh, yeah, hold on. Or you just let it float. All right, the crew getting a chance to kind of catch their breath, do some checks real quick. Each of them checking gloves, as that's what we're interacting with everything on, checking for any nicks, any damage. Both reported clean gloves. Good. See Josh Casa attaching an equipment tether to that second scoop. It's going to go on the other side, and that's how he's going to hold on to I Rosa. Pop off, and then I'll pull it back uh, towards my body to hold it on the structure, but it might come off the pins like last time. Yep, affirmative. Okay, Nick, I think uh, I think it's going to be concerned. I agree. Let me get one. Okay, no, I'm ready. Okay, copy, uh, guys. Do we need to go from them? Hey, guys, you are go for the release. Go. All right, big moment coming up, releasing that last bolt. Bravo 3, counterclockwise 2. Should be 26 turns. And once this bolt is released, Irosa will be free of the FSC and ready to be on the move. Can we just do uh, uh, THC left, 2.4 meters only? Copy. Press. And we concur with that, Koichi, that sounds like a good plan. Okay, Frank, it's already trying to go. Copy. It's pulling me forward. And copy, good release. And we see the bolt is now released. Nothing holding Irosa in place now to the flight support equipment. We can already see it starting to lift up. Now that the second attachment point for the scoop, you can see a small lever on the back. And the lever's in the middle, the scoop's in kind of its capture mode. You can flip it to the left, that's in its lock mode. Then swing it back to the right to release, but it looks like we have two scoops now. Just one second. Down here. Okay. Off. Great. I've got two scoops. Copy. Uh, good release. Scoops are on. Uh, and 
Frank, do you want to translate over to Stanch and Charlie to assist the GCA? I have shifted to my right. I think well, so I think you're bumping me just a little bit as I had that. Yep, sorry, I that's okay. Um, if we expect you to be centered up on these four bolts uh, that I'm staring at, right? I think we've just shifted a little bit. Base Let's see. Yeah, Josh, we, we, you know, based on what we can see here, you, you should be pretty close to centered right now. There's not much room to go laterally. Uh, we do see it kind of pitching down from you away from the base plate. Okay. Thank if you could pull it when you get there. Yep. Yeah. 
You're about a quarter of the way clear of the uh, grapple fixture. Halfway clear of the grapple fixture. Got about five inches of clearance on this thing, so. Continue. Copy, continue. The bottoms of the beam are past the uh, post. Uh, about five more inches to your completely clear. Josh, you are completely clear of the tower and the grapple fixture. Thanks, Lita. Nice teamwork, guys. All right, no, good job on pulling that thing. Twenty centimeters to go. Copy. Can I go ahead and start my uh, socket swap? That's a firm, Frank. You're going to so socket swap. Put the okay, Josh, uh, position hold, and we're going to set up a Joe Kess for outboard Joe Kess. Okay. And Frank, you're going to drop off your 12 inch onto the socket caddy, and then put the 2 inch that's in your trash bag on your PGT. Uh, just for your essay, this is the last time we're getting in the, the crew lock bag tango. Um, so if you uh, give us a good heck of you, we can help with inventory, uh, not asking for an inventory at this time. Okay. Copy. Two hours, 47 minutes, 30 seconds into the spacewalk, IROSA now released from its spot on the FSE, that flight support equipment. Firmly in the grasp of Josh Cassida, who's riding on the end of the Canada Arm II robotic arm. He's got it by two scoops, essentially temporary handles that they installed onto the array. They're also tethered to him, so he's got that in his grasp. Meanwhile, he's going to now get flown on top of the robotic arm from his current location out to the work site. Understand, you take care of this uh, video routing and and he's getting that the flight maneuver courtesy of Nicole Mann and Koichi Wakata at the robotics workstation inside the station. Meanwhile, Frank Rubio is going to make his way by hand over to the same work site, at which point we're going to start moving into uh, some of the in installation uh, procedures. Uh, first thing after we get it over there is going to be to, to get IROSA initially onto its mounting bracket. Uh, once we get some soft capture points in, we'll be able to unfold it. So it's you can see it kind of doubled up in its configuration right now. It's going to be unfolded. Uh, and so it's just one continuous array long ways. After that, they can get the final uh, attachment points in place, get all of the, the hard capture bolts engaged, then start to... Uh, do the cable routing. So again, uh, at the very beginning of this spacewalk, Frank Rubio's first task was to go over and start routing and tying down a couple of cables. Those are power connections. That's going to integrate this new array in with the legacy one to the 4A power channel um, to let them all uh, get engaged. And a good pull test. Now that cable routing activity is one that has some special considerations with it. We have to be in eclipse for those power connections to be made. That's just the, the primary way we can make sure that no electrical energy is being generated by those solar rays. So they will wait until we're on the dark side of planet Earth before they do that cable connection. If you can pull a body down a little bit, it'll get fully in the heck of you, and we should be able to see inside. That was a good view. Uh, go ahead and, you, Frank, you can go ahead and, and start trying to pack it all up, and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the video review on the ground. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, Josh and Frank, we're ready for the uh, outboard joke, yes? 
This is a three-minute maneuver, and uh, we'll uh, move uh, just uh, body left eight meters and body out about three meters. And uh, Josh, uh, IROSA and FRGS power clearance will be 73 centimeters. So uh, please keep uh, uh, so please uh, keep the clearance from the uh, tower. And if you're ready, uh, we will start the maneuver. I think we're already clear of the tower. I don't have view of it. Understand going body left and towards my back as well. I am ready for the maneuver. Yep, and I have a good visual on the tower, and you are clear. Okay, copy that. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. Good motion. All right, so the relocation of Ibros are now in work. We can see the FSC pallet in the bottom right where uh, Frank Rubio is doing some final bag inventory. He had to swap out the socket on his pistol grip tool one final time uh, as that's going to get used to drive a number of bolts uh, on Ibros itself to secure it. But in the meantime, the robotic arm is in motion. Josh Cassida at the very top with Ibros in his grip on his way out to the work site. Frank Houston concurs. And Frank, your next task is to retrieve Josh's red safety tether from the Nader Cedar rail location. Thank you. Um, I thank the owner. Great. You know when we did that water in the helmet check? Yeah. That's when I raised my visor. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yep. Just wrapping up now. Okay. Okay, hold on, that was pretty abrupt. Okay, we got it. Okay, okay, Josh, in position hold, are we gonna set up the next the chill guest for IROSA pitch joint? Okay, copy that. Richie, that one stopped uh, a little quickly on me. If you see it ramping out on the next one, uh, if you could give me a heads up, that'd be awesome. Okay, we'll do. So just about five minutes away from the three-hour mark of today's spacewalk and plan to last about seven. Everything moves smoothly so far, still a couple of minutes ahead of the timeline. Uh, the pair work together to prepare the work site by routing cables. Frank Rubio knocking that out is on his first task out of the gate, uh, while Josh Cassida worked to get IROSA ready, Iros ready to, get, to get detached from its temporary stowage point. 
uh, and get into the robotic arm where he is currently standing uh, with Irosa in his grip. You heard him uh, asking for a heads up as we were going to slow down some of the motion. Again, these Irosas weigh right around 750 pounds. Uh, and while they are in microgravity, it's not too hard for them to start moving those. Uh, but something with that much mass uh, can be hard to stop moving. So definitely something for the crew to keep in mind as they're doing these very slow and deliberate movements. This of you, though, from Frank Rubio's helmet cam, as he's making his way out to the work site. Okay, we are ready for the Irosa 6 showcast. And uh, this will uh, give you... Uh, uh, move heads up around Irosa for 90 degrees pitch down. And if you're ready, uh, we will start the maneuver. Understand we're pitching down 90 degrees, and I'm going to be ready for your countdown. Sounds great. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. Secret motion. And Frank, I see you picked up the, the red hook there. You'll want to check your gauntlets are in place. Okay, Josh, we are ramping out. Okay. And so, Frank, the handrail you're looking for is 5124. On the uh, opposite side, correct? That's a firm. Hey, Josh, I'm in position hold, and we're going to set up for a, a lineup. Sounds great. Thank you so much for your help on that one. Thanks for that, up. And, Frank, if you can, you can put a fair lead in Josh's uh, safety tether at 5114 there at the corner. And just crossed that three hour mark into today's spacewalk. So, right now we're looking over the shoulder of Frank Rubio, EV1, our lead spacewalker for today. He's making his way over to the P4 worksite. This is, he was there already once as he laid down some of the cables that are going to be used to integrate the new solar array into the power channel uh, along with the legacy array. 
So he's making his way by hand. In the meantime, Josh Cassida still in the foot restraint on top of the robotic arm. He's got Irosa in his grip. There's a look through his helmet cam. He is a little bit of a ways away from station structure, um, so the video can kind of come in and out as he's getting flown over. Uh, but he's got Irosa in his hands. Which will place you under the IEA, and this is a two-minute to kill guess. And uh, we'll, we'll move you body out about 5.5 uh, meters and body left about a meter. And again, this is a translational jaw cast, so the motion will be faster than the pitch motion. Ready for the motion. Okay, copy. Towards my back, about a little over five, and towards my left, a meter and a half. I do not have the IEA in sight. I am ready for the maneuver. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one. Starting the motion. Josh, uh, we are ramping out. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Josh. Hi, Frank. Frank, I see you in a good position there on the, uh, the left side. Yep, and I can verify all uh, face off caps are still in a good position. Hey, uh, Josh, I'm in position hold. We're going to set up for manual for IROSA install. Copy. And, and Frank, uh, the, uh, the same cautions and warnings apply that I've previously read. Uh, plus a couple here. So the warning is don't put finger in the IROSA pin slots on the inside and outside of the root beam. And then uh, when on the aft side of the mod kit, avoid contacting the legacy blanket boxes and uh, trunnions. Okay, copy off. Thank you. Yep, and then you've got the uh, cautions about mod kit. Uh, don't simultaneously impart loads, translate slow, and a max load of 30 pounds. Josh and Frank, uh, we are ready for the uh, manual maneuver to the IROSA install position. This is for your GCA, Frank, to the published position, which is uh, body left 2.2 meters. Are you ready? Okay, uh, I am ready. Yeah, and you have a courage just to verify this is a GCA to publish, correct? You published, which okay. is uh, body left 2.2 meters for Josh. Okay. Uh, you have a go. Okay. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, arms in motion. Good motion, good motion. Happy good motion. Another 1.5 meters to go. Still clear, continue. 
کتاب است And with Josh and Irosa arriving out at the worksite, we're maneuvering it into the install position. So there's going to be two soft capture. Copy, still clear, continue. Two soft capture devices that are going to, to lock in on uh, this first part of Irosa. And after those are engaged, we'll be able to get uh, Josh Casta out of the robotic arm to move around to begin uh, getting ready for the unfolding of the array after which they'll engage the third and final soft capture. Fifty centimeters to bell. Copy, continue. Continue. Twenty centimeters to bell. Okay. Expect to ramp out in about ten. Copy. We're about in. I continue. Continue. Three, two, one. Hello? Okay, around south, so this is uh, close to the published position. Yep, and this is a great location here. Um, Ten so seconds to get over. Getting closer. Can you get your hand on it? And it should just be a quick video handover. We'll get that back quick. We're approaching the install point. Install point. Uh, once they get there, my Cassidy is going to continue to just maintain control his grip on Irosa and so the edge of um protective cover is about three centimeters away from the bracket. Right. Uh, well, I think from a clearance perspective it might be a good good place to stop. Okay. Now we could translate you towards me, body forward. Um I'll leave that to you. I don't know that that's necessary. Um but for me, let's see it looks like my arm is yeah, I'm, I'm good. I think we're in the same position we were last time. Yep. Okay, we do the uh, GCA complete. Okay, copy GCA complete. Takes on, you have a go for IROSA install. Copy, go. Okay. Just watch your, uh, your right arm. Um, and Frank, Josh, you want to let you know we're back with you. I got my hand on the uh, rail here. Awesome. And I just have one caution okay. to confirm so that there's no BGA uh, motion. Now that we're in the Sorry, I'm stepping on you, Josh. Just one caution to make sure that we don't have BGA motion before installing, um, but you are go for the install. Okay, and we need to remove uh, this left scoop. Anything else before we get started? Just that one scoop, yes. Frank, you got it with your, uh, your right hand? Uh, give me one second. I do. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep, uh, yeah, if we can keep from moving it uh, towards the planet. Let's see. I'm going to take my hand off. Right. So our spacewalker is working in tandem again. Right now, Josh Castro working to remove that scoop. That was just that temporary handling aid that he had on Irosa. I'm trying. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
let's translate it uh, towards me when you're ready. I'm ready, and you just guide. I think you need to pull it towards uh, the seat. Oh, not that way. I think it's not parallel with the uh, bot kit right now. Uh, no, it's not yet. Um, well, let's translate it towards me first, and then we'll uh, okay. another uh, 10 centimeters. You didn't. You mean uh, towards the left side of the mod kit, not into the mod kit yet? Correct. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And it's uh, it's at a pretty good angle right now, so you're gonna have to pull your hand towards you. There you go. Okay. All right. So now we're going to roll my end towards the IEA about 10 degrees. Okay. You're gonna have to pull a little bit towards you. Okay. Or pull towards the IEA. Are you able to um, push your end towards your feet? Okay. It's uh, hold on for one second. Oh. <clears throat> uh, for some reason, your end is not going. Yeah, okay. Let's just get going towards the mod kit and then we'll. Just it once we're in clear. Just a couple more degrees. Okay. Okay. Then they slide a little bit towards the left side of the mod kit. It looks like the line up on that air bar move. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's too far, maybe. What's about right from my end? Perfect. Okay. Okay. And now we can just go towards the pads. Pitch down. It's trying to pitch up a little bit. Nope. Watch the roll. Watch the roll. Yep. Yeah. Hold on. Give me a second. There you go. Okay, I'm going to start bringing this. Yeah. Yeah, I'll slide oh, under oh, real quick. Oh, I think oh, I'm going to oh, be able to control it a lot better. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I got it. I got it. That's, that's good. You can let go over there. Okay. Go ahead and let go. Okay. Do you mind if I slide under? We will help you a lot more. Mm -hmm. Nope, that's okay. Just watch your helmet on the... Yep, thank you. Okay, ready? Clear the soft. Out. Uh, oh, there you go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Nice and slow on any rotations here. The top left, you can see some of the bolts sticking out. Those are going to be the hard capture. Those two handles you see are going to be our soft capture mechanism. So, crew just working on aligning IROSA, getting it in place. Watch your helmet. There you go. That one went down. go down pretty easily, is that right? Um, At least that one did. Yeah. Okay. Your helmet is um, pushing on the air just so you know. Okay. Copy. It looks like we're lined up here. Laterally. Yep. Okay. So if you're ready to go back towards the PGA, a minute. Okay. Let's do that. Ready? Three. Take it in. Okay. One, two. Oops. Oh, oh. I think that's too far. Yeah. Right. Um, I 
Did you able to visually see the uh, tabs going into the plot? Uh, not from here, but I can reposition to do that. I think. Yeah, watch your head. There you go. Nice save. See if we can get the tabs. Are you able to take your um, the far side um, away from the IA so we can pitch, pitch it down? And you want to pitch like this? Yep. Yeah, pitch the nose down towards the runway. I got it. Yep. Push towards me. Uh, you mean laterally? Um, laterally up towards the EJ. Okay, so down the runway. Here it comes. There we go. Oh, not this one. Yep, got this one. Okay, hold. Well, uh, we got one in, and yours closest to you. Come on, try to hold it without moving it one inch. Watch your helmet again, sorry. Why don't we pull that one all the way full out and re let it recapture? What do you think? Yep. That's good. Yeah. I understand this looks aligned. It looks... Can you watch your helmet? Oh, there we go. Nice. It's in. Is it in? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nick, I think we got two. We, we, we were all watching. Can you verify it said nice it looks good from all angles there? <laughs> really nicely done, Frank. That was mostly uh, just forcing the thing. But it got in. Yeah, Nick, I'm not really sure what the issue was on that one, to be honest. We were, we were lined up. It looked parallel. Um, yeah, but it just felt like it wasn't uh, able to release in a full engage position, and then somehow it just clicked. So, so I don't have better uh, data for you there. Yeah, no worries. I appreciate the words, Frank, right. and uh, we've got the and background I I copying release, it all right? down. You are good to release or attach the long duration tie down to the scoop, and then you'll release that scoop from the root beam. I thought I was just releasing the rat for the next maneuver, leaving the scoop and long duration tie down tether on there. Josh, that sounds like a good plan. It doesn't matter to me. It's, I just wanted to be able to release my death group on that bed floor. Completely understand. So, uh, I've stowed the left scoop on my mini workstation <laughs> and um, retrieved my rep from the right. That leaves the right scoop and the long duration tie down tether. Okay. If you agree, Nick, I'm going to go ahead and uh, have Duke get started on the next maneuver. And Josh, that sounds like plan. Too easy to. Go ahead, Josh. Okay, I am ready for the, I guess it's the R6 back off position. Yes, that's correct. The uh, first one is a maneuver, uh, manual maneuver to the IROSA back off position. And after that, there's a show castle. We're setting up a manual maneuver. Stand by. Awesome. Dude, nicely done getting us in here tight so we can get that thing in. Okay, Josh, uh, we are ready for the uh, maneuver to the IROSA back off position. 
And this is uh, to your body right two meters. Are you ready? Body right two meters, EV2 is ready for the maneuver. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. It's a good motion. So after some finessing, Frank Rubio, Josh Casta able to get the IROSA into its install position. We were able to engage two of those soft capture handles that we watched uh, Frank get ultimately installed after they tweaked the alignment a little bit. Next up, uh, we're going to be moving the arm back. So Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann inside the station backing Josh Cassida away. And he's going to uh, then start to get out um, pretty soon of that of that APFR. Before that, um, he's going to have to release a hinge restraint. Um, so that's what's in place to essentially keep IROSA folded. Uh, once that gets released, um, there's uh, a one bolt uh, R6 that's going to get released, and then they're going to be able to move into unfolding uh, of the array. So again, first we're going to unfold it, and then we're going to deploy it. So it's two different steps. So right now it's folded up kind of like a sandwich. Um, we're going to unfold that and then move to secure uh, the third soft capture and then bolt this thing into place in the mounting bracket before we get to cable install uh, and ultimately unfurling the new IROSA array. So everything continuing to go really smoothly for uh, both of our spacewalkers, uh, hitting a couple of sticky points, but moving and being able to work through each of them uh, without any issues. We're still a little bit ahead on the timeline as we're at three hours, 22 and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. Josh, I uh, just want to give you a heads up on time timeline, big picture. We're doing good. You're seeing the sunset. We're targeting the next eclipse for the cable mate. Copy that. Thanks so much. And so right now we're heading into an eclipse. You can see things starting to get dark on the crew members there. Uh, and as you just heard Nick Haig uh, call up. We are ready for the R6 uh, back of Chilcast, which is a three minute maneuver. And uh, we will move you, your, your you, to the left about 90 degrees. Are you ready? I'm ready for the Chilcast. Thank you. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. And that call right there, so Koichi Wakata and Nicole Mann executing another maneuver with the space station's robotic arm, you heard JOCAS, it stands for Joint Operated Command Auto Sequence. Uh, just an automated sequence for maneuver of the arm helps the crew member just uh, be more aware of where the uh, the different loads, the maneuvers are going to go. They're maneuvering Josh Casta right now in a position to release uh, what's known as R6. And that's what's going to be able to let them ultimately unfold uh, the IROS uh, array. Uh, we are going to be targeting the next eclipse, though. Um, so that's about an hour and a half from now uh, before we get into any cable mating. Because, again, we have to be in eclipse. That's our most surefire inhibit to make sure that the arrays aren't generating any electricity. That's when we're on the dark side of the planet. Um, and so we'll have to wait for that before we can do any of the actual cable connections, start integrating these arrays together into the same power channel. Meanwhile, the crew uh, waiting for this maneuver to take place. They've got cameras there with thermal covers over them, able to take pictures of both hardware uh, and other things during their spacewalk. Again, we're just, just shy of three and a half hours. We're at three hours, 25 minutes. Uh, so we are just about halfway through the planned timeline for today. Everything going great so far. 
uh, with Josh Cassidy and Frank Rubio that we've got Irosa in his initial capture. Two of the three soft capture mechanisms are engaged. The third won't get engaged until after we're able to unfold. And then after that, we'll be able to start bolting everything into place. Hey, Josh, position hold. We're going to set up for R6 approach manual maneuver. Okay, you are a go for the GCA to publish for R6 uh, approach. Okay. We are setting that up. And Josh, your PGT settings are going to be Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2. And Josh, we are ready for the maneuver for your GCA to the published R6 approach position, which is body in one meter. Okay, start GCA to published. And uh, Josh, because at night we don't have good, uh, the view on the cameras, uh, if you could uh, monitor the clearance of the ingress aid to the structure. I've got ingress aid and boot plate to structure. Okay, here comes the motion, and in three, two, one, in motion. See good motion. See good motion. Continue. 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 Continue another 60 centimeters. Continue. Continue. Another 30. Continue. Copy. And ramp out in three, two. Nothing out. Okay. It's going to work fine. Uh, GCC complete. Okay, GCC complete. But you have a go for unbolting. And Josh, before you start doing turns there, we need to clean up the scoops. Okay. So, so big picture, you're going to daisy chain the scoop that's on you and the scoop. Uh, that's got the long duration in front of you that's already, that's still attached to IROSA. Um, and when those are daisy chained together on that long duration, you're going to hand that to Frank so he can send it over to Crew Lock Bag M. So Josh Cassidy is still on the end of the robotic arm now in place. Before he can remove this final hinge restraint, he's going to remove the scoop. It's on the left side of your screen. That's the temporary handle that was put on IROSA to assist with uh, him holding onto it as they flew over to this work site. End the long duration. Not the end that is attached to the scoop. You'll see him swing the small lever that's uh, just... Uh, below the circular part over to the right that puts it in its release position. He'll be able to pop that off. He's then going to hand it over to Frank Rubio to go temporarily stow it on uh, the exterior of a crew lock bag. The scoop that's on my mini workstation is ready to me, so I'm going to take this here. Can I give you this right to put on the long duration? On the long duration, yes, I can. Uh, um, the end of it, end of it. It is on. Lock that. Yeah. I'll wait to release my rest up. Okay, so you're ready to the long duration. The long duration goes to one scoop. Uh, the other long duration goes to this scoop, so I'm going to release my rat. Go for it. Okay. There's one scoop for you. 
And then I will release the scoop that is uh, attached by Rosa. <laughs> you have a go. See you scoop in the release position. And now both of those scoops that were used to give a handle essentially for Josh Cassidy now transferred over to Frank Rubio. He's going to go temp stow those. Scoops back down to crew lock bag M. Um, between the two of you, we'll want to put the eyes on the soft capture feature just to make sure it's in a good position. And then uh, Josh will wait for Frank to get into a position to hold Irosa because when we release that bolt, it'll unfold. Understood. Um, I can see out the side that the other uh, soft capture is not deployed yet. It's sticking up. If you want Frank to see the other side of it, you can just leave. That's a good config. Thanks for the check. I am in position. Okay. okay, so we'll just confirm those settings. It's been a bit. Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2, and it's going to be 18 to 20 turns. The bolt will spring out when it's fully released. Okay, I've got Bravo 2, counterclockwise 2, in a stay of 18 to 20 turns. Good feedback. We're on R6. All right. Certain turns. All right, so Josh Cassida right now releasing the final hinge restraint. Once this is released, we'll be able to start unfolding the IROSA array. So before that happens, Cast is going to have to stow his PGT, and then he's going to back off away uh, from Iros on the robotic arm. He's going to get out of that foot restraint and start making his way back over. And then once he gets into position um, over on the other side of the mounting bracket, uh, Frank Rubio is going to slowly start to pivot, and that's going to allow uh, Iros to start to unfold. Copy, good release. So Josh, uh, while Frank holds that in position, uh, you're good to work with uh, Koichi uh, for the arm maneuvers. See that? Okay, M2, EV2 is ready for the R6 back off maneuver. Okay, uh, copy that, Josh. This is a body out uh, for about uh, 90 centimeters. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. Be good motion. Be good motion. Ramping out. Copy. Okay, Josh, position hold. Uh, we will set up for the APFR egress uh, geocast. Copy.
Josh, so we are ready for APFR egress setup showcase, which is a three minute showcase, and uh, we will move you, your you, to the right about 90 degrees. Are you ready? Ready for the showcase. Thank you. Okay, here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. Be good motion. Copy, good motion. Just the arm is uh, wrapping up. Okay. Yeah, the arm is in the position hold, and we will set up for manual to APFR egress position. Okay, and understand that is a uh, GCA to publish? Affirmative. Thank you on your setup. I'm ready for the GCA to publish to the APFR egress. Okay, Josh. This is a body left 70 centimeters. Here comes the motion in three, two, one, in motion. Good motion. Copy. Good motion. Two centimeters to go. Continue. Thirty centimeters to go. Okay. Continue. So at this moment, Nicole Mann, Koichi Wakata. Continue. GCA another 20 centimeters. Yeah, another 20 centimeters. Ramp out in three, two, one. The motion. Okay, stop in the motion. Position hold. GCA is complete for me. Yeah. Okay, Josh, your brakes on. You have a go for APFR egress. Copy that. I can understand the uh, egress just with the ingress aid. And that's affirmative. All right, so again, the robotic arm with Josh Cassett at the end backed away from the IROSA and moved over to the station structure itself, and now he'll be able to egress or get out of that foot restraint. Yes, we do. I'd like you to get it stowed in uh, low profile. And once Cassidy is able to get out of this foot restraint, he's going to move back over into position to help Frank Rubio start to unfold I Rosa. They're going to work together to slowly unfold it. Casta will be 
uh, ready to engage the, the final alignment and the final soft capture handle. We saw the first two get into place when they brought IROSA over to the mounting bracket, so we'll have one more to go. After it's unfolded, there's two hinge bolts, um, and those are going to get uh, driven in, into place um, using a combination of the PGT, our, our drill, uh, and also a, a special tool called the AMS knob. It's essentially a screwdriver that you can operate by holding it in the palm of your hand. Um, and this way we're going to make sure we're not imparting too much torque on the final um, on the final install of these bolts, and these hinge bolts are what's going to securely hold uh, the array in place once it's unfolded. Copy that, Josh. And so you're going to uh, move over to the uh, to the mod kit, and uh, when you're in a good position, you'll give uh, Koichi the uh, go to reposition the arm. And Josh, big picture, as the arm stretches away, you'll keep an eye on your safety tether and, and eventually put a uh, fair lead on the right lower strut handrail. Okay. I go there now, if that's okay, and then, uh, then we'll work on the arm ops. Foot isn't pulling too hard, so I'm not sure if this fair lead's going to stay. Hey, Josh. We are fair lead on the lower. Go ahead. Hey, hey Josh, just wanted to, uh, I, I was probably unclear in order of ops. We'll put the fair lead in afterwards just to make sure we stay clear when we unfold the IROSA. Big picture is leave the fair lead out, let the arm stretch away so that we don't restrict the, the pull out of the cable. Okay, so undo the fair lead I just did. Shouldn't make much of a difference, right? Nope, you're just going to need to put eyes on it. I've got eyes on it. Um, come to EV2, you are a go to maneuver uh, the arm away from the mud kit. And Josh, we'd like that fairly lead out. Okay, no fair lead. Thank you. I'm going to go back up to the mod kit then. Yeah, no problem. M2, EV2, did you copy? Go ahead, Josh. You are a go to maneuver the SS RMS away from the mod kit. Okay. Uh... We're going to move to the uh, tether swap position, and uh, because of the night lighting, we do not have the clearance view, and uh, the tether is clear, right? The tether is clear, but I also don't have a good view of the arm itself. Yeah, somebody we're going to check. All right, so while you guys do that, I'm going to get myself in position for the unfold here.
Do you have a good view of uh, each other here? Yep, yep. And clear there. You might want to sweep it down to your left side of your body. It'll go across your body, but it'll yeah, uh, it'll go under your um, you know, under your armpit there. Oh, there you go. That's perfectly clear. Awesome. Okay. I think we're in a good spot to unfold, if you agree. And Josh, just want to make sure that the arm is in a good position. It is uh, back over my left. It is uh, is not clear yet. Copy, Josh. Uh, we'll wait for uh, Duke and Kuichi to get the arm where it needs to be. Uh, then we'll confirm that the safety tether is going to be out of the plane of uh, the unfold, uh, and then we'll get happy and everybody give you a go. Sounds good. Okay, uh, Josh and Frank, uh, we are ready to uh, maneuver uh, to the tether slot position. Uh, first, we will move to the station starboard the three meters, and then uh, after that, we need to move zenith two meters, but uh, we need to have a better lighting for the clearance monitoring for the uh, zenith motion, but uh, we will start with uh, station starboard the three meter motion at this time. You are a go. Copy, coach. We're still setting up the manual mode. And our astronauts inside the station, Nicole Mankwichi, we're kind of working now to move the robotic arm a little bit out of the way, and then we're going to be able to continue on with this unfolding. Three, two. One in motion. I see good motion. In motion. Together looks good to me. Okay. Another 1.5 meters to the station starboard. Got You've got eyes on my 50 tether? Two. Yeah. Oh, if they can't go station Zenith, it actually is going to be in the way of the uh, unfold. Yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd be close. Yeah. night pass for being near uh, beta, high beta angle. 30, 10 meters to go. Nothing. Okay, your starboard maneuver is complete, and uh, we will need to move to Zenith for two meters. At this time, we don't have good clearance view. Okay, uh, are you able to move at all, Zena, without, uh, without more light? Yeah, we can move about a meter, and uh, we need to move for two meters total. What do you think, Frank, with that? Uh... Yeah, and I can, uh, Koichi, I can clear the lead all the way down, uh, all the way Zenith. I just can't clear the rest of the arm, but I have a really good view of the lead in the APFR. Yeah, uh, all we need the clearance is the APFR clearance, so if you could monitor that, I would appreciate it. Okay, uh, I can do that. Okay, here comes the motion in uh, Station Zenith. Uh, three, two, one, starting the motion. Good motion, good motion. Copy, good motion. So we had peeked inside for just a moment, we saw Koichi and Nicole Mann. Copy that. They're working inside the Destiny Laboratory at the Robotics Workstation. You can see them right here. Nicole Mann's our M1, our robotics lead. She's been the one controlling the arm so far today. 
while Koichi takes the comm duties, uh, speaking directly to Josh Casta and Frank Rubio outside. Meanwhile, they're still perched right at the Irosa's install point. We're waiting for waiting for the arm to get out of the way, essentially, before they can start to unfold um, Irosa. They're again going to be working in tandem to very slowly unfold Irosa, at which point Josh Cassidy is going to be able to engage the third and final soft capture. Hey, Frank, if you can put a hand on Irosa, it's starting to unfold. Okay, yeah, position hold, and thanks for the clearance, my train. No problem. Sorry, I got to put my arm down to see the, uh, see the arm. Yep, understood. We were watching it the whole time. And so, Josh, if the safety tether is clear, the original fair lead that I had you put in was intended to provide some additional clearance of your safety tether uh, relative to the current uh, arm position to make sure it stays out of the fold. I see. Do we need it? No. Okay. Doesn't look like um, it. I'm happy to put it in, but it's yeah. it'll be it'll give a little extra safety margin. Okay. Only need to go like half the distance, but unfortunately I don't think there's anything there to <laughs> No. That's okay. I'll go do it. Sounds like a plan, guys, and uh, just to let you know we're still up on the timeline. Okay, thanks, Mike. And Josh, while you're uh, working on that, Frank's holding it closed. I've got a warning here to avoid the pinch point uh, when you're uh, unfolding and rotating IROSA. Okay. Up it up. Thanks. Have a go. 
there we see Irosa starting to unfold. So this whole time, Frank Rubio has been keeping a hand on it as once that uh, last bolt, that R6 bolt, was released, uh, it was able to unfold. So the slow unfolding process now underway. Well, it's going to work. You're okay? Okay, that's good. Once we get it completely unfolded. Okay. We're going to be looking for Josh Cassidy to engage another alignment and a soft capture handle. Remember, the soft capture is left trigger, so they counterclockwise. Um, yes, correct. All the way in yet. There we go. Okay. Engaged. Right. And let's make sure. Okay. And Nick, you can probably see that in the heck. I think that's a good engage there for the third. And copy all. We see a good install. So before you guys go too far, we'll do uh, gloves, hap check, and uh, gauntlet check on everybody. Okay. Uh, EV1, no changes to my gloves, good gloves. Gauntlets are both down, and your hat is dry. No changes to EV2's gloves. And gauntlets are in place. I can maneuver them if I need to. And my hat is also dry. Okay, good checks, thanks. Um, so the next thing, we're going to drive the R7, R8 bolts. So Josh, you're going to move into position. Uh, to work those hinge bolts. Uh, and Frank, you're going to work on, um, you've got those long duration with the scoops back at crew log bag M. Uh, you're going to get those stowed, but you're also going to retrieve the AET with the AMS knob. All right, so a good initial install, a good soft capture. It's just going to keep coming back out, but um, it's all here near the bag. Understand, Frank, and uh, what we're really looking for is just a retrieve of the uh, AMS knob with the cap keepers and just your SA, we're leaving that redded back uh, to the bag. The that is uh, affirmative. I have it in hand, and it is redded two ruts back to the bag. And so right here in the hands of Frank Rubio, that's the AMS knob that's going to be used for hand tightening of some of these bolts. So IROSA unfolded. We made it in time. The PGT is still powered up. And I'm up near uh, R7 and R8. All righty, your setting is Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. Alpha 1, Clockwise 2. That's a good readback, and uh, you're going to drive uh, expecting 14 to 16 turns. 14 to 16 turns. I'm going to confirm those settings with you again here in a second. These gloves are fat and uh, just killed the power to this thing. I've done that. Mm -hmm. So we're looking through. Frank Rubio's helmet camera, that's Josh Cassidy there with the pistol grip tool. He's putting the settings in. So Alpha 1, if you remember, we've got A1 through 7, B1 through 7. Clockwise 2. Alpha 1 is the least torque. Let's see again those turns, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, 14 to 16 turns, you're going to torque. Okay. So looking at putting the minimum torque possible on these bolts using... Uh, the pistol grip tool, it's actually a little bit more torque than these bolts are designed for. So after he drives them in, he's going to drive them back about one turn and then use that AMS knob to hand tighten these bolts. And these are just what's going to ensure that IROSA stays in this unfolded position. So he's got two to go, R7 and R8. He'll get these first hole tighten them both, and then we'll see him switch over to a counterclockwise to loosen them up one turn, and then Frank Rubio will hand him the AMS knob to do some quick hand tightening, tightening it back about a turn, 
at which point uh, we will be done with those bolts and they'll be able to step into uh, securing the eight mounting bracket bolts that are going to do essentially our hard capture of IROSA on this mounting bracket. Pursuing 17.58, good green light, and torque at 2.4. That was R7. Copy, good bolts on R7. and a half. This is 17.31, good green light, good torque of 2.4, that's R8. Copy, Josh. Okay, so the next step is we're going to go alpha 1, counter 2, and we're going to release each of those bolts one turn. Alpha 1, all right, clockwise 2 for one turn. You know, if you need me to hold your feet. <clears throat> Oh, that wouldn't be bad. Yeah, I'm gonna come uh, horizontal here. Oh, that'd be great. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Starting counterclockwise. One. Copy, Josh. Good release on R7, R8. Uh, so once you stow the PGT, uh, Frank's going to hand you that AMS knob. So again, Josh Cassidy using that pistol grip tool first to do the initial turning on these final two bolts to secure secure Irosa in the unfolded position. He then backed them off one turn each, and now just using this to hand tighten because we didn't want uh, too much torque on these bolts. They were actually designed for a little bit less than the minimum torque possible using that pistol grip tool. So this hand tool, our workaround, we used the pistol grip tool at first because uh, otherwise doing the full tightening with the hand tool would be pretty torturous on a crew member so lesson learned from earlier spacewalks good install on r7 and looks like r7 complete next up is going to be r8 and then once this is done cassidy is going to hand off uh, 
the AMS knob over to Frank, who's going to stow them in that crew bag. And then they're going to move into securing uh, IROSA to this mounting bracket with uh, eight additional bolts. And so it'll be over to Frank Rubio and his PGT to get those installed. Thank you. Copy, Josh. Good R8. And uh, from a translation aid perspective, uh, you can use the base of those bolts, the bolt cam, but try to not put load into the bolts themselves. Okay. Can you talk about the M1 through M38 bolts? Affirmative. Okay. Well, they'll be gone soon enough, because Frank's going to take care of them, I think. <laughs> Are you ready for uh, red folks on the caps? Affirmative. All right, here's J4. Yeah, one and two, if you want. Okay. Let me just right, head over to my, uh, yeah, thank you, Taylor. Yeah, I can, I can get it. Good with that plan, Nick? Yeah, I'm going to cool down here a little bit first. So right now they're removing some of the caps from the connection points for these cables. Reminder that we won't be able to do the entire electrical mating until we're in an eclipse, as we're going to be plugging into the legacy array, which is obviously unfurled and generating electricity. Copy, Josh, five on the TCV, and so you're uh, going to work with uh, with Koichi for the arm to get into the tether swap position. Okay. I'm going to move over there, Frank. Thank you for bringing that over my way. Yeah, absolutely. And then can I get started on uh, 31 through 38? Affirmative. Uh, just while you're under there, I've got a caution for you to avoid inadvertent contact with the cables and NG NZGL connectors. Uh, that are attached to the IROSA. Um, but yeah, we're going to start with uh, any order is good, uh, so whatever's convenient. And when you're ready, I'll give you the PGT settings. Okay. All right. I'll wait one real quick. in position and we will take it. Copy that. Thank you. I think I'm ready for those settings. Okay, hey Frank, the settings uh, are Bravo 5, clockwise 2. Bravo 5, clockwise 2, copy. Yep, that's a good read back, and uh, you'll check that the black line is flush. Uh, you'll drive the torque.
So a little over four hours, 10 minutes into today's spacewalk. Another quick momentary handover. We'll get that video back. Um, so we're now stepping into uh, some of the final bolt driving uh, that we're going to need to do in order to, to secure IROSA to its mounting bracket uh, over to get integrated into the 4A power channel. So there's going to be eight bolts, and it's going to be over to Frank Rubio, who's going to be using that pistol grip tool again to secure those in place. It is locked. I'm going to go put it on my right D-ring extender. Josh Cassett is doing a little bit of housekeeping right now with his various tethers. Uh, and meanwhile, Frank Rubio getting into position uh, to use that pistol grip tool. He's going to be using a little bit more torque. We're going to be at Bravo 5, so again, 1 through 7. 5 is your highest, or 7 is your highest, so we're not quite at max torque on this, but we're getting pretty close. There's four bolts on the left side, and then four bolts on the right. Copy, that's a good Mike 31. Frank, just want to confirm on M31 there was a black line flush. Yeah, sorry about that. Next uh, black line was flush. Copy, thanks. Okay, my red hook is on my right D ring center gate closed, so I left black on black. I retrieve my rep and unlock the reel. Did you copy? Yep, copy, Josh. Uh, see you working to uh, release the rep and unlock the reel. You got a good tether pack, so you're good to pull your anchor. Back on bike 32. Actually, have 14 turns, green light, 22 decimal, one torque. Copy, Frank. Background flush. And copy, Frank, and we can see it in your hacker as well.
Okay, I've got my 55 foot wrap. Nick, I think we're in a good config to go ahead and uh, maneuver the arm again, if you agree. Concur, Josh. Quichi, okay. I'm just going to get out of the way, go back to the mod kit, and then I'll give you a go of whatever is your next maneuver. Okay, uh, just copy that. Uh, if the tab is removed, we can maneuver to the uh, IEA backup position. I stand by. I'll give you a go here in just a second. My 35, I had 13 turns, green light, 21 decimal, 9 torque, black line flush. Copy. Good. M35. And M2 EV2, you are a go to move and Uber the SSRMS. Okay, copy that, Josh. Uh, we will maneuver to the IEA back off position. All right, Frank, well, I'm starting to get other stuff on my mini workstation again. I'd like my 36, 12 turns, green light, 22 decimal, 2 on the torque, and black light flush. Copy, good bolt. Would you like me to stay down here at the IEA, or do you want me to help with the SFE 7 at 38? Uh, I'm working 37 right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, if you don't mind, I'll just talk to the eye real quick at uh, 38. Sure. I will stay out of your way. My 37. Uh, I counted 11 turns, it might have been 12, so green light, um, 21 decimal 9 on the torque, and black line is flush. Copy. Good bolt. Nick, how long till that next eclipse? Yeah, we got uh, a little over 35 minutes, Josh. Okay, so, so we're going to go to R9 and R10 next. And uh, Josh, I was waiting for this bolt stuff, and then I was going to give you the big picture. Okay, sounds good, sir. Uh, 
like uh, 38 was 12 turns, green line, 22 decimal one on the fork. Uh, the black line is, it's flushed if I look at it with the canister around. Stop. Yep, copy. That's a good bolt. Um, and so, Frank, you can stow the PGT. Uh, big picture, we're a little over 35 minutes before the start of the working eclipse. Our next activity gets us into the cable mate, so we're able to start a few of those steps and work on the IROSA mating. Uh, and then we're going to break out of that and try to do some of our cleanup, uh, all with the objective of getting back into position for the uh, finish of the cable mate before we start the eclipse. So with that, uh, Josh, you're going to move into position on the right side. Frank, you're going to move into position on the left side. You can, you can, you can work in the middle. I guess they're all located right there. Um, and we're going to work uh, P3, J3, P1, J1 on Arosa. Okay, copy that. Josh, I am clear. Sounds good. Thanks. Can I get started on uh, P1, J1? Affirmative. Uh, you're going to mate P1 to IROSA J1, uh, looking for good checks and over center. Yeah. Heads up, Frank, that orientation brought my safety tether behind me. So I hopefully didn't create a problem, but uh, just the way I came up. Okay. It looks just off my right side. Yes. Okay.
Okay, can you pull your direction? Oops. It's not the black line, is that the air wire timer? That's awesome. Give me one second there. And uh, in fact, do you want to just make yeah, that one? I got this one. All right, you got three twists here. Good config. Like uh, P4 to J4 and P3 to J3, correct? That's affirmative. All right, T4 is native to J4. I had good pins, good EMI band, no fog, and it is over center. Okay. Copy, good P4, J4 mate. And P3 is native to J3, good pins, good EMI band, no fog, and we are over center. Copy, good P3, J3 mate. So that's the end of the cable mating that we can do before we're in Eclipse. So Frank, we're gonna have you head over to the crew lock bag M and we're going to spend a little time cleaning that up. Copy that. And so a quick check in, four hours, 27 minutes into today's spacewalk. Uh, if you want. <laughs> Seriously. Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy just completed uh, some pretty important tasks to secure the IROSA solar array. Hey Frank, hold on opening that side. Leave that closed. Okay. Okay. Happy that. And let me know where you can see here the other side. And Frank, yeah, we, what we want you to do is work on trying to uh, stow everything in the other half of crew lock bag M. Um, and then we're going to move that over to the cable bag and uh, put it inside, uh, realizing that we still have to retrieve a scoop off the bottom of the mod kit, but we'll take care of that later. Josh has a lot of extra rets this <laughs> um, okay, do you guys have what you uh, need on that? Can I put stuff away? Okay, we're and, uh, and Frank, I can confirm we've got a good inventory of the bag via your HECA, so you're good to close it all up. Copy that, thanks. Again, at this moment in our spacewalk today, we're just shy of four and a half hours. The IROS the solar array has been installed onto its mounting bracket, both Frank Rubio uh, driving all eight bolts to secure it in place after working with Josh Cassidy to get it unfolded. They started some of the cable mating work, uh, connecting the uh, cables to the NZGLs, the NASA Zero Gravity levers, that's just the cable interface that they have on these power cables. They've uh, started some of that cable routing uh, with the connections made to the IROSA. We will not do... We will not do uh, the routing to integrate those in with the existing solar array until we're in Eclipse, and that's coming up in a little less than 30 minutes from now. Are you able to post caps in there while I hold? Yeah, keep uh, one of things, one minute to troubleshoot something there. Hey, 
Frank, we understand it's a tight fit in there. Um, big picture, we're going to put this inside of the cable bag, so if you have to put something on the outside of crew lock bag in, we're okay with that because you're getting ready to put everything inside the cable bag. Okay, copy. Thanks. Almost there, Frank. So again, as we wait for Eclipse, uh, which is coming in about 20 minutes from now. Can I, can I hold your feet? <laughs> you can push me back down, that'd be great. Okay, sounds good. That one cap is out, but I don't think that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was just what I could tell Nick, but I had to leave one thing out. Uh -huh. And copy, Frank, we see it. Uh, and. Uh, so now you're going to move the crew lock bag M uh, down inside of the cable bag. Right. Okay. I'm happy to help unless you think that's too many cooks in the kitchen. <laughs> no, this one I might take you up on because yeah, that's it. it. It's a bear. Let's do it. And, and big picture, guys, we've got 25 minutes until the uh, working eclipse. Uh, this is the last thing we're going to have you do, uh, and then we're going to have you get into position, catch your breath, and then uh, get ready to do all the cable mating in the dark. Sounds great. Thanks, Mike. You just heard the voice of the ground IV today, Nick Hague. He's the one here in Mission Control talking, Frank and Josh, throughout this entire spacewalk. So they're doing uh, one small task out of order, so they're doing some of their cleanup. That to keep us clear on the feathers. And that should be somewhat useful on the IDA bag. Um, give me one second here. There's no, no rush unless you need. No, I just need to see how to home when I get down. Um, yes, yep, right there, perfect. Yes. Is there a handle on the back side of this uh, A-frame? Uh, yes. <laughs> Maybe we could just split up that way. User? Yeah, user. Over here. Perfect, useful. Yep. First DVA where you had that moment of like, where's the bag? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just had that. <laughs> if I remember it. Oh. Alright, okay. Let's send the ID back to me. I'll put it down here in my uh, IEA. Sound good? Yep. Let's see. Okay. Wow. That is going to be crowded. All right. Uh, you ready with the M bag? I'll try to open fairly quickly. I'll just open, stop, close. Yeah. Sounds great. Uh, let's see. And you're going to take the large, small inside um, to anchor it. Yeah. Hey, Frank and Josh, really, I can give that to you and just, put it up. just want to uh, offer up, uh, if you think it's going to be too crowded on the inside of the cable bag, we're okay if you bundle the two together. I'm going to defer to you. You're the expert on bundling these things if it's a good yeah. idea or not. Let's try opening it uh, real quick. Okay. And then if it doesn't work, uh, it's probably going to want to go in the middle compartment, which 
has other stuff in it. I just, I don't know what the top crew arm is going to have enough height. Um, to make the Velcro, you mean? Um, yeah, it's to fit this whole, you know what I mean, like, to bring the flat, um, the lid back over. But we could do this, right? We could connect that to hold it down. Is there another one over there? Uh, yeah, uh, there is. There is. This one right here. Goes up and over for the lid. You want to try for upper shelf first? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Actually, here, let's switch. I'll switch. Give you the bag now, and I'll hold it. Hey, stand by. We need to get this anchored in there. And, guys, while you're putting the bag inside there, we will want to end up with a ret that comes from the inside to the outside to grab the scoop later. Right there. Okay. Use yeah. that. Grab it. I'll take that one off. I'll grow it out. And if you want, you can just use that one that's right there at the bag lid uh, as the ret for the scoop. Thanks, man. I got the large, small uh, anchored in there on a D ring. Okay. And that D ring appears to be part of the bag. It is. I'm going to take off my ret. Um, Two in there first, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's see here. Oh, oh, this guy. So close, I can taste it. There we go. All right, go ahead and grab your. We've got two large hooks connected inside of this. I'm off. All right. Ready? Yep. I get a positive. We're in. Now we are just shy of four hours and 40 minutes into today's spacewalk, which uh, kicked off earlier this morning about 7.19 a.m. Central Time when uh, our two spacewalkers, Frank Rubio and Josh Cassida, turned their suits over to battery power. Since then, they've been able to accomplish every single task laid out in front of them so far in order to get this uh, new rollout solar array uh, in place and over to its installation point on a support bracket that's going to have it perched essentially right over the existing array uh, for the 4A power channel. Uh, they were able to work together to get it released from its temporary stowage point and then ultimately moved over to where it now sits. Uh, they've been able to successfully bolt it in. 
there's a uh, hook on the lid right there behind your right hand. They were able to successfully bolt bolt the array to the support bracket and started at least some of the cable routing, uh, connecting the four uh, connection points to the IROSA itself. At this point, we are just having them do a couple of cleanup tasks ahead of time while we wait for Eclipse. I don't know that that's going to hold. It's kind of shooting out the side here. That's on right here. You just play with the same anchor. And as we approach the four hour, 45 minute mark, the crew, Josh Cassida, Frank Rubio, done with that short get ahead task, wrangling some of the cables and connectors that they've been using so far. Uh, right now, they're going to start making their way over to their next worksite position where they're going to be connecting a series of cables. They already started this work, uh, plugging in the sides of the cables into the connection points on the IROSA solar array, but then had to stop until we hit Eclipse as they're going to be essentially tying those cables in uh, to some additional connection points on the solar array wing itself, the existing one, and then they're going to be plugging those in to integrate both the existing solar array and the uh, new IROSA into the same tie-in to the same power channel. So we're going to wait until Eclipse to make sure that that array is not actively generating any electricity before they get that go. Okay, all the way back uh, 
just when I turn here, it almost seems like it's not coming through from my right side. Yeah, um, all the way to your body, it's clear. That's uh, just what I'm looking at right now. Time. We're about five minutes away from getting that video signal back with the space station. So in a bit of a hold point as they get to their position before the, the final cable mating steps uh, to start integrating this IROSA into the uh, whole electrical power system uh, for the station itself. And these IROSAs, uh, this is going to be uh, the fourth of six planned. Um, this will be the fourth one to get installed, and all of these designed to actually boost the overall output uh, of the electrical system on board the station by about 30%, bringing it up to about 250 kilowatts of electricity available for payloads, scientific research, any of the hardware that we have on board to use uh, on all segments of the station. So this is a multi-year process that's been underway. Uh, each time requiring several spacewalks to install these. Uh, first to install a mod kit, a, a mounting bracket, essentially all the hardware you need to put the array in place uh, and then flying up the arrays uh, two at a time in the trunk of a SpaceX Cargo Dragon. Um, so this will be array number four and once we see it deployed it's going to cover up some of the existing array but with its increased efficiency is going to be able to, to boost the otherwise lost power that you would have had from covering up those cells. After they're able to get the cables mated, uh, the last major step is going to be unfurling of, or deploying the, the rollout solar array. And it's all in the name, so it's, it's rolled up. There's essentially just two bolts that are holding it in that rolled up. set up here ahead of time. Yep. There. Again, there's uh, just about two bolts that are holding it in this rolled up uh, configuration right now. And so after those are released, uh, the array actually does all the work itself. It's got built in tension that will cause it to slowly unfurl. You have the solar blanket with all of the cells in the center. And on either side of that, you have booms, um, which are really providing a lot of the structural support. And as we see those start to unfurl, uh, right now they're in a flat configuration. They're going to curl up and a series of magnets are going to go into place to help um, hold them into that form. Um, we talked about it a little bit earlier, so those booms, the the best analogy we've gotten so far. Thanks, just for a uh, heads up, uh, we're down HECA right now. Just the KU outage should, should come back here shortly. Coming up on a short handover, uh, we've got just under eight minutes to go. So clock is ticking slowly. No worries, thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, but again, as we as we see those, soak it up. And our two space walkers, Frank Rubio and Josh Hassett, are getting a moment, catching their breath before we head into Eclipse and we can give them the green light to start finishing this cable routing. Uh, we'll head into the Eclipse and then we'll wait about two minutes until we give them the go. Then the clock will be ticking. They'll have 
a little less than 30 minutes total to complete uh, as we need to essentially stop any work if we're not done before the eclipse is over and the sun starts coming up. Uh, but they already knocked out uh, some of the initial cable routing that's going to be on their task. They made it all of the four connections to uh, the IROSA panel itself. Um, so they'll just have a handful, uh, four different connections to make to the uh, existing solar array panels um, and then two final connections uh, to integrate uh, both the existing solar arrays and the newly installed uh, internet uh, IROSA, integrate them together uh, into the 4A power channel. And so all that's going to be coming up in a couple of minutes. We should get our KU, um, our, our, our high data rate signal, uh, which allows us to get that live video in just a minute or so. And we'll get back over the shoulders of Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy, four hours, 51 minutes, 28 seconds and counting into today's spacewalk. Guys, we're back with you now, and we've got good HECA. Okay, copy. Copy, Dark Swift. We still have another five minutes. Um, Josh, if you're in a decent position, uh, teams on the ground would like to get a heck of view of your load alleviating strap on your red reel. Um, in some of the video frames before, we thought we saw some red stitching showing. There's a tiny bit uh, showing, maybe about uh, two millimeters, three millimeters. Um, I'm in a super good position right now for, for our work. Um, would it be a problem if we just did it afterwards? We will wait and we'll take the words in the meantime, so thanks. Thanks. It was uh, where the 55 foot wasn't pulling, uh, my tether back was pulling quite a bit. And so it kept getting hung up on the uh, right near Spansion Charlie when we were working up there on SSE. Okay, copy. Good work. And Josh, Frank, uh, looking at about three minutes, although we're going to wait on Spartans go until we get words for us. It's going to get dark. We're going to wait a few more minutes, and then we'll give you the go to uh, start with the cable ops. The eclipse is almost 30 minutes long, so we've got a lot of time to work these four connectors. Awesome. Good to know. Thanks, Mike. Sounds great. Thank you for that up.
And as we can see through the cameras, things starting to dim. So again, we're going to wait until we're at least about two minutes into the eclipse. Uh, the Spartan flight controller responsible for the electrical power systems on board the station. I'll do some safing commanding and then the astronauts will get the go to start uh, mating these different cables. So they've already connected the cables um, to the IROSA connections. Those were done uh, ahead of time and didn't require that eclipse. So what will be coming up next is in essentially installing jumper cables. They're going to be connecting um, to uh, two different points on a panel uh, for the solar array wing and then having this jumper cable installed and then those are all going to then get tied in um, to the IROSA cables which then get tied in to the ultimate power panel which will then safely integrate both the existing arrays and this new solar uh, and the new IROSA into the 4A power channel. Hey Josh, Frank, appreciate your patience. You are go to start working the cables. Uh, Frank, that's going to be a D-mate of P7 from panel P7. And Josh, you're working P9 from panel P9. P7 from panel P7, that is disconnected. Copy, D-mate on P7 from panel P7. P9 is demated. I understand uh, P9 Alpha is going to the panel. Copy. P9, good demate from panel P9. You're working on P9 Alpha going to panel P9. Uh, P7 Alpha going to Alpha 7. Copy. Hey, no fraud. No bent pin and good EMI band. I have the same no fraud, good pin, good EMI band. Work. Copy good checks, both go to mate. made it to uh, Alpha 7, and I had a great click at the end for engagement. Copy that. Uh, good uh, mate for P7 Alpha to panel P7, and that was clicked to the hard stop. So you're go to mate uh, J7 Alpha to the array cable P7.
right, just working through some pretty significant memory on this cable here. I'll keep you posted. Copy. Understand. We got plenty of time. Alpha mated. I do have a good detail. It does not line up with the black line. Okay, it's copy. Hard. We're checking just for the hard stop, so it sounds like you got a good mate on uh, P9 Alpha to panel P9. So now you're working J9 Alpha to the uh, saw cable P9. So we're coming up on five hours, five minutes into today's spacewalk. The cable routing is still underway. Again, all of this being done to, to integrate both the new IROSA array and the existing solar array into essentially the same power connection to provide a power on this 4A channel. There's four total connections that were made to the new array and then after we were able to complete that prior to an eclipse. Uh, now that we're in eclipse, we're able to start making the connections to the existing arrays and then tying them together to the panels. So those first four were already knocked out. Copy, Josh. Good uh, mate on J9 Alpha to P9. So you, you are good to uh, demate Papa 23 from panel 23. Looking at P24 here. Do you want that horizontal? Let's just talk about that one. Yeah. It, it, yes, it, the answer is yes, but we'd like you to focus on mating the cables first and we'll clean up afterwards. P23 Alpha, putting in my band. On the panel. And handover. No band pins. And then a, a short com handover right now. Short com handover, so we'll get that signal back. So they're continuing to step through. 
uh, this final cable mating, cable connections um, to integrate it. So essentially what we're doing is we have four connections that went into the iRosa, and then we have a series of jumper cables that are going in between the existing connections between the legacy array and the power panels. Um, so they've made four connections to the new iRosa array, and then a total of eight connections um, are going to jumper them in and continue to connect the, the legacy solar arrays as there were there were four four connection points on the legacy arrays and then four connection points in the panels themselves. So to put a jumper between all of those we're looking at eight. So all told we're gonna be making twelve connections today. Four of those were knocked out before eclipse, the next eight underway right now. Papa 21, I made it to Papa 21 Alpha, and I had a good click. Yep, copy that, Frank. And, and Frank, you're right there. Um, the Papa 22 on the panel, that tab is, is uh, not horizontal. If you can lock it in place, that's perfect. Yep, yep just good. Okay, so now you're so moving Papa on. Papa 7 is, did not end. Sorry, Papa 7 uh, Alpha did not end up horizontal to Papa 7. Yeah, good quick, and I see the blue stop. Do you want me to fix that? No, you got it to a hard stop, so it's a good mate. Okay, copy. Okay, so Frank, you're working Juliet 23 Alpha to Papa 23. 21, my bad. Reading the wrong column. Juliet 21 right. Alpha to I know what you meant. P21. Thank you. All right, Papa 23 Alpha is made it. Did get a hard connect there. It just wasn't quite as uh, convincing as P9, but it definitely, you can see, I can undo it. Yeah, if it's a hard stop, that's what we're looking for. Okay. They clicked in. All right. And understand P23 from the saw out to this last remaining one. Affirmative, J23 alpha to P23. No vent pin, no fraud, and the EMI band here on saw cable. You're good to mate. This one, 180 degrees out, let's see. saw that connected and good hard stop. And just looking at these black lines, you can see the black lines all lined up on P23. You actually have like more of a turn there on P9 if you see it. Yep, we uh, we see that in the HECA, Josh, and the black lines are, are a rough guide. It's the hard stop that is, is what counts. Um, with that, we show all four connections are good for you. If you wanted to double check that the uh, two that we did not touch on the panel, that those saw tabs on the connectors are horizontal. Yeah, um, happy to do that. P24 to come horizontal actually comes counterclockwise. Is that really what you want me to do? See, if I go clockwise, it's not going any further. Yep, clockwise to a hard stop. That's all we're looking for. I, I didn't do the hard stop for P24, but um, it is more than clockwise, so it is not horizontal, but I think that's what you want. Okay, uh, copy. We're good with those checks. So that looks like a good cable config, Josh. Okay. So the next step, uh, Josh, would just be tidying up uh, the slack on those remaining cables. Okay. Papa 21, 
is made it to Julia 21 Alpha. I wasn't getting a click, but I think I just wasn't feeling it. Uh, I felt it that last time there. Good connection. Okay, copy. Good mate on J21 Alpha to P21. Uh, so you'll work the same, uh, just trying to tidy up any of the cable slack. And with Frank Rubio calling out that last one, that Julia 21 Alpha, that was the eighth and final connection we were looking to make during the eclipse period. So as of right now, it looks like all power connections to integrate the new IROS have been done successfully. So with that, the crew's gonna get the go to uh, just start cleaning up some of the extra slack on these cables, uh, just making sure they're not uh, free floating too much. They've got a series of wire ties and other means uh, to secure them in place. And after that, they'll uh, likely do another what we call glove half and gauntlet check. The cable and the panel. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Okay. So Josh, uh, it, since you finished that up, uh, let's do a glove half and gauntlet check. Okay. No change to gloves. 3v2. And gauntlet are covered. So the gauntlets are covering the, uh, the wrist ring. My half is dry. Okay, copy, Josh. Those are good checks. And uh, that finishes up the cable mate activity. Next will be deployment, so you're going to move into position to be able to drive that uh, R9 and R10 bolt. Okay, sounds good. All right, next, uh, cables are kind of tied up here. Uh, did you guys get the views you needed for the mates? Everybody down here is very happy, Frank. So um, I'll take a glove, hap, and gauntlet check from you. Copy. Uh, on my left glove, my ring finger, I've got a little tiny piece of um, the um, rubber that's missing, but it's um, the tiny chip, and everything beneath it is intact. No further tearing. And otherwise, gloves are a little bit dirtier, but uh, no changes. And my app and gauntlets are uh, covering what they need to cover. Copy all, Frank. And uh, with that, if you want to maneuver into position, uh, to observe uh, the tower magnets on your side of the boom uh, so that we can see that when we do the deploy. Copy that. Target handrail is on uh, P5, it's 5201. Copy. Sure. Oh, good. And uh, just to let you guys know, we've got about 10 minutes left in the eclipse. So as usual, you're making it look easy and getting done ahead of time. So we'll get you into position, and then we'll, we'll wait for the sun to come up. Okay, copy. All right, do they have to deploy in uh, sunlight? Or is that just for a better view? We will uh, deploy in sunlight. Yes, that's 5203, correct? 5201 is what I called out, but you're looking to get into your call for a good position to look back and see that base of the uh, boom as it deploys, and you see those initial magnets connect together. Okay. Yeah, I think 5203 is a little bit uh, better option. Yeah, we'll go with 
And with all of those cable connections made successfully to spacewalkers, Frank Rubio, Josh Casta are now going to get into position to release the final launch restraints and deploy the IROSA solar array. So screw these bolts in so I can navigate on them. Yeah. It does make life easier, doesn't it? Yeah. So once they do get in position, Josh Cassidy is going to break out the pistol grip tool again, and then we'll have two restraint bolts, R9 and R10, to release. And after those are fully released, Gyrosa will start to unfurl itself just using the stored energy uh, in the solar array itself. So no mechanism other than releasing those bolts. Uh, Fr Frank Rubio is going to get into a position just to monitor the deploy and get a good view from his helmet camera on the ground. There will be several cameras pointed at the deploy as teams watch it unfurl. Uh, we're going to be paying special attention to the two booms, uh, really the structural support on either side uh, of the solar array themselves. I know it's a ways down the road, but uh, this one's another Bravo 7, is that right? Affirmative. Bravo 7, counter clockwise 2. Seven. Is that kind of clockwise two? Is that? And yeah, and we're uh, we've got uh, about seven minutes of uh, well, probably about nine minutes of eclipse left, and then uh, Spartan's going to have to run some uh, checks before uh, we give you the go once the sun's come up. So there's a little bit of waiting. Copy that. Copy that. Thanks. Rubio and Cassida continuing to work incredibly efficiently so far. Uh, they've been moving through each of the tasks, uh, completing them all a little bit ahead of time. We've had a couple of waits just because of eclipse conditions. Uh, now we're going to be doing the opposite. We're going to wait until the sun comes up to deploy the boom. Gives, uh, enough uh, good views to confirm that it's deploying. While you guys are waiting, I'll uh, read a warning to you. So prior to releasing the deployment launch restraint bolts, position to stay clear of the deploying IROSA blankets. Okay. You want copy. Don't go scale on that uh, legacy array. <laughs> it's uh, definitely not center, but about. about Point eight, one, two, five degrees. Okay. It's a very calibrated eye. So at this point, we've got about another five minute wait at least uh, until we're starting to get out of the eclipse. And then the Spartan flight controller here in Mission Control Houston going to run a couple of quick power checks. So again, we made all of the necessary connections to uh, start to integrate the new solar array into the electrical power system. So they'll check it out before we give the crew the go to actually release those launch restraint bolts and let the roll of solar array unroll. Um, after that, we will essentially be done for the day, at least on the planned task timeline. There will be some additional cleanup steps, both with the robotic arm and all the gear that they brought out with them. We were able to see them uh, get at least a little bit of that done, wrangling uh, the pretty big mass of uh, cables, connectors, and other items uh, into a cable bag to get ready to bring back inside. And then we'll stand by to hear if we're going to be attempting any get-aheads for today or if the crew will get the go to 
just head back inside. So all of that still to come. Uh, probably one of the most visual moments of the spacewalk, though, coming up with the deployment of this IROSA solar array. And this is the fourth of six planned additional arrays to augment the station power system. We're increasing the amount of electrical uh, of electricity that we're generating by about 30 percent once all of these are deployed. And as they are new arrays are coming in with uh, brand new efficiency, all of these focused on just continuing to provide energy for existing station hardware experiments, but also with an eye to the future as we're operating through at least 2030 uh, to continue to support new commercial modules, things of that nature, uh, all bound for the station in the years to come. So really critical infrastructure upgrades. This will be the fourth of six, as I mentioned. We'll look for the fifth and sixth to fly uh, as soon as next year to complete the full power upgrade. But for now, standing by for a few more minutes until we get to the actual deployment phase. Uh, everything has been completed so far on the timeline. They went out the door uh, just five hours, 23 minutes ago and turned their suits to battery power, starting our spacewalk, able to do all of the pre-steps uh, to get the IROSA ready to get extracted from its temporary holding point, uh, releasing a number of support beams that were holding it in place before Josh Cassida But again, we're just standing by for a couple more minutes, both Frank Rubio and Josh Cassidy in position uh, to get ready for this IROSA deployment. It's going to be Josh, Ca Josh Cassidy with the pistol grip tool once more. He's going to be releasing the two restraint bolts, R9 and R10. You guys just need to enjoy the sunrise. Should be in about a minute, and then we're going to have a, a couple minutes while we get everything checked out. Right now we're looking through the helmet cam of Frank Rubio, EV-01, our lead spacewalker for the day. And just at the very bottom you can see that thin line of blue, the limb of the Earth, starting to illuminate as we move out of eclipse and back into the sun. And 
and then after a couple minutes we'll be in full sunlight again as we run a couple of quick tests by the Spartan flight controller here mesh control will be ready to start stepping through uh, the deployment phase getting IROS unfurled and one step closer to being a, a new full addition to the electrical power system on board the station. And as we continue to look through Frank Rubio's helmet camera, you might be wondering why it looks like Christmas lights speckled throughout the view. Uh, those are actually uh, dead pixels from the image sensor in the helmet cam as uh, different photographic equipment on board the space station is exposed to radiation for longer and longer periods of time. Uh, those image sensors can start to degrade. Um, and those typically show up as dead pixels. So if you're wondering what all the different multicolored dots are, uh, that is what you're looking at. Uh, they've become very apparent anytime we're looking at something very dark at nighttime, uh, but we'll start to get washed out here as the sun comes up. This is the view right now from Josh Cassidy's helmet cam. He's going to be jumping in next to release those two launch restraint bolts, R9 and R10. He's going to be using his pistol grip tool. He got those settings you heard called down, Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. Again, on our pistol grip tool, we have that first value is just how much torque you're imparting. We've got Alpha 1 through 7, Bravo 1 through 7. Alpha 1 is low foot torque as you can do, Bravo 7 the max. Um, so he's going to be maxing out the torque on this one uh, and then moving it counterclockwise, which is going to release a bolt. Uh, okay, thanks, man. I'll just stay here. I was, yeah. Can't, I can't make a shadow up during the day, so. Uh, the space cat. Apparently, I just don't spend any time with Okay, guys, the uh, <laughs> the teams down here have have uh, given their thumbs up, so we're go to deploy. So, Josh, you're going to work on R9 and R10. Settings are Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2. All right, we'll start with R10. And that's Bravo 7, counterclockwise 2, and how many turns are we expecting before it pops out? Yep, 17 to 20, and a white line should fully appear when released. Sounds good. The sun has looked into my eyes for the last 10 minutes. All right, so this is the view from Frank Rubio's helmet camera. We can see Josh Castle on the left there was starting to work those bolts. Just in front of him, the iRosa array. The center part is uh, where the solar cells are contained. And then that white section you see on the right side, so that's the boom. So it's flat right now. Uh, the best way to think of how the boom deploys and adds that kind of that structural support, the rigidity. Um, it functions similar to if you took a, a drinking straw here on Earth and cut it in half lengthwise and then rolled it up. popped all the way out. Um, and it actually popped earlier. I could feel it. All right. One bolt released. 
Copy, Josh. Good release on R10. And Bravo 7, counterclockwise. Second bolt driving. Once it's released, we'll start to see the deploy. Copy, we see the release and deployment. Second bolt release, IROSA now deploying. We're going to see, and again, there's no mechanism to make this unfurl, it's doing it all with the stored energy of the array itself. And the the white sections you see on either side, so those are the booms, those are going to unfurl and tend to curl up, uh, similar to as we were talking about, if you were to take a straw, cut it lengthwise, roll it up, and then just let it go, it would naturally just try to curve back into that circular structure. And that's what those booms are going to be doing. There's a series of magnets. The crew's also going to be keeping an eye on body back about three or four degrees that help our view. Much better, thank you. A little bit further would be even perfect. Yeah. And Frank, we can uh, just barely make out those magnets. I think all five of them have clicked uh, closed at this point. Do you know where we are over the planet? Hey, you're just uh, south of Alaska, getting ready to go uh, do a pass down the uh, west coast. Awesome. Florida. You might even be over Houston by the time the deployment finishes.
sides of the array continuing to unfurl this the view that Josh Cassett is getting right now as it unfurls away from him after he released those two launch restraint bolts. You can see air traffic. Sure. Yeah, there's a control. There. Yeah, I see it. And that view from Frank Rubio's, if you look at the booms on the side, you can see they, they kind of curl up after they continue to deploy. This is a look at the very far end. You can see all of the solar cells in the middle there and those booms as they continue to stretch out. They're they essentially snapped together uh, into that circular structure. And then they have magnets that are helping to help them maintain that structure when, once they snap in. And Frank, Josh, while we uh, hold position and wait for the uh, deployment to finish, just kind of give you a heads up on the way forward, at least near-term steps. We've got the uh, tensioner bolts that we're going to do, uh, and then we'll move into kind of cleaning up the scoop and the cable bag, and then we'll focus on trying to get the arm clean and the FSC in a good config. Okay. Sounds great. Copy that. They're continuing to watch as these unfurl. Again, as you can see, they're covering up some of the uh, the solar cells on the existing arrays, which are still tied in to the power channel. But uh, these new ones coming in with a higher efficiency, obviously brand new, so haven't lost any of that efficiency that you lose um, over time and being exposed to that harsh environment of space. We're going to be able to increase our actual power output. So we're, we're aiming to have six of these total eventually deployed on the International Space Station, this rollout solar array technology. Um, we did an initial test of these, this type of array uh, several years ago on the space station just to, to see how the mechanisms worked, how the power generation worked, um, and then ultimately culminating in some permanent additions to the station. Uh, this same type of rollout solar array technology used on the NASA DART mission, which was uh, our asteroid redirect. It's that storm. Yeah, it's crazy. I think it's affecting the entire country. And we are passing. It's coming up on the uh, Pacific Northwest. Okay. Just about to pass over the Pacific Northwest, and as any of our viewers in America are aware, there's some pretty significant winter weather hitting a lot of the country, so our crew members getting a view from about 260 statue miles above. <laughs> While this rollout solar array almost done deploying, we'll note the same type of solar array, this rollout technology going to be used on NASA's gateway station around the moon as well. That's going to be our launching point for the Artemis program and future lunar landings, eventually establishing that sustainable lunar presence on the moon. So our crew members continuing to stand by observing 
the rollout after this deployment sequence is complete. We'll have a couple of uh, final steps. For Josh Cassida, he's going to have two blanket tensioner bolts that he is going to release. These essentially activate a spring that are going to pull on some internal wire to uh, the solar array itself to add some tension, which will be uh, necessary as we're maneuvering and gimbling the solar arrays as we always try to point them to track the sun. Look at the fountain. Yeah, it's coming well, it's coming right meter right now. Between I don't know if you can see between the two solar oh, yeah. Wow. That is a lot of snow. I think it's here in the bottom of the Okay guys, we have confirmed we've got a good deployment on IROSA. So Josh, you're go to move into position to do the tensioner bolts R11 and 12. Copy that. And for both of you, I've got a hand over in 15 seconds. Copy that. And just a short handover, we'll get that video signal back as uh, the crew now stepping into some of the final steps of the day as they're going to uh, work to now release two blanket tensioner bolts. Uh, Josh Cassidy using his pistol grip tool to, to make that happen. Those are going to uh, trigger some springs that are going to pull on some tensioning wire in the arrays to add some structural rigidity uh, to this now fully deployed solar array. After that, we'll get into some worksite cleanup, likely get another glove hab and gauntlet check just to walk through those again. Uh, so crew members obviously using their hands for everything on a spacewalk, not actually using their feet. Uh, voice waiting for video to lock up. Good. So they'll do periodic checks of their glove surfaces looking for uh, the loss of any of the grip or anything of that nature, just looking for next cuts, things like that. Let me know and I'll get you the PGT setting. I'm just trying to make sure that safety tether goes across the front of me. Um, there it is. Yep, got it. Hey, copy, and we're locked back up on Hexa. Okay, Nick, I am going for my PGT. I'm over at R11. Copy that, R11. Uh, PGT settings are Alpha 1, counterclockwise 2. Alpha 1, counterclockwise 2 on R11. Yep, and you're going to release uh, five to six turns.
one is that counterclockwise two? Affirmative. Alpha one counterclockwise two. Alpha 1, counterclockwise to start the turns. Copy. Five to six turns, it should pop out when fully released. Okay. Popped out a little bit, but I definitely felt the tensioner. You can see a white line that I popped out a quarter of an inch. Copy. That's a good release. R11 is good. And there's five is out, and I felt it react. It's about a quarter inch. I think that's a pop out. Do you want it? Uh, do you want more turns on that? And we're good with them. more yeah, more can turns. The teaser. Okay, you can see in the heck I can see that it's. Uh, the teeth are no longer engaged on the tensioner itself. Yep, the, and we, you can't overdrive it, oh, so. Yeah. Okay. I think we're good on R12. Copy, good release on R12. And so, Josh, once you uh, stow your PGT, um, you know, we'll want to do a once over on the mod kit to make sure all the MLI is in place. Um, the one piece of equipment we've still got out there is the scoop. So if you want to grab that scoop. Happy to do it. Uh, Stay by for one second, Frank. So my PGT, the, uh, the rat is not going back where I expected it to be going to. Yep, it's uh, wrapped around your. Um, extender. My extender? Yep. Your gearing extender. Your gearing extender. Um, I think you might just want to let it be. Or you'll have to undo your uh, PGT and go, um, oh, I see. I understand. Yep. Maybe when I'm close to you, we'll just uh, take my PGT out of the off swing arm. Yep. So I'll go around it. Sound good? Yep. All right. All right. Frank, my understanding is I'm going to get this rent. We'll uh, send it over to the cable bag. And, and that's affirmative. And so, Josh, you can write to that scoop. You can take it over the cable bag. Um, we were talking about whether it, it's worth you guys working together to try to put it in that cable bag because it did take you a little bit to get it closed up. So we're also good if you want to just put it on your MWS and translate with it back on you. I'm happy to do that. There's a, there's a good amount on here, but maybe it'll keep that. Out of the way, who knows? Yeah, and you, you, your guys' call, we're good on time. I'll say it again, Josh. 
I just try to figure out what you want to do with the scoop. I can put it on me right here, or we can uh, go with that plan and put it in the kibble bag. Yeah, we'll do it. Um, I think if we can avoid opening the bag, it might be better. Oh, yeah, let's not do that. I was thinking we were going to tether it and then try to jam it in the side. But I'm, if you want, I'm happy to put it right here on the front of my mini workstation. Um, we can put it in here. We'll try. I'll give you a little bit of easier translation. Too bad if we just jam it in here, it might just stay. Alright, um, can I pass it to you? What's the verdict? Did it go in okay? Uh, give me one second. So with the IROSA installed, deployed, and connected successfully, we're moving into some of the cleanup steps. Uh, one that we're seeing them work right now is getting one of those scoops, which are the Good. Um, it looks good, Frank. So I guess I should go. So, Frank, you're going to uh, put the cable bag on your BRT and uh, translate that back inboard, uh, leading the way. And uh, Josh, you're going to have to translate out around the other side of the IEA. Um, before you start that, I'll check that. When, once you get to where you're going, we're going to have you do a glove and half check. to the opposite side of the IEA, and then pause. Yep, you've got the... Uh, I mean, I got a copy of me, right? Copy of me, I need to
Okay, copy that. That's in your kind of a behemoth. Yeah. Um, you need anything from me? Um, just moral support. <laughs> you got that, and then some. Good news is, be on my BRT in <laughs> 15 minutes. Yeah. It's, uh, I wish there was actually a way I could keep it. Once you have this thing on, it's just easier. Yeah. I think it's worth it to uh, work on this PGT rep. Um, no, I think I think it'll be good all the way in. But don't worry about it. No, I wouldn't. Some of the and then I could just translate to you and fix it if we need to. I will be right next to you in a minute, but we don't have to get it if you don't need. And Josh, while you're waiting there for uh, Frank to lead the translation back, um, we wanted to look at the, the MLI on the lower struts of the mod kit. Um, we're trying to make sure that those are in a good configuration and wrapped around there for thermal concern. I'm on the inboard edge of the IEA. I understand you want me to go back? Affirmative, Josh. If you can uh, translate back toward the mod kit on the path that you just finished translating on, uh, we'd like you to put eyes on the uh, MLI. Okay. Do you want me to stick around or go ahead and back? I think we're okay, but I guess I'll defer to Nick on that one. I don't know. Yeah. Frank, you're good to uh, you translate to back in. Uh, it shouldn't take okay. it shouldn't take Josh long to uh, to work on the MLI. The area of interest, Josh, is on the lower struts, uh, just below the base of the mod kit uh, plate, the mounting bracket. The lower struts, but up high. That's affirmative. And Frank, while well, Josh checks out that MLI, uh, you're you're heading to the port seat of cart uh, to attempt to stow the bag. Yeah, sorry, Nick. I could have told you about this earlier. I know what you're talking about. Uh, there is no way to get those up over the bolt themselves. I don't. I gave it a really good pull earlier. Um, there's a hole that the bolt is supposed to go through, and it will. The MLI will not reach. I think the, uh, when this was installed, that was probably the case. I get then, uh, at least on the right side, I got the uh, wires structure in to try to get the hold on. Yeah, copy that, well, Josh. Back if you can just hold position there, we've got a good video of it. Uh, let us discuss. Okay.
Frank, and Frank, you're good. Uh, so I don't know if you can see this. It looks like when I put Josh's uh, red hook on my red reel, it probably spun a couple times. There's a, a full two wraps here. Um, I think I'm going to go up to the uh, FIC. I just want to make sure I see that. You're okay with it? And Frank, we see it. And Frank, you're go to continue. Copy. And, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, which uh, Cedar Code am I putting this bag in? The uh, starboard or port? It's the port one. Copy, thanks. It's the port Cedar cart. Uh, you're just dropping the bag off temp stow so that we can go work the FSC beam. Okay, Josh, uh, thanks for the views and the uh, close inspection. We're happy with the condition that it's in, and so you're go to translate back and board. Copy that. And Josh, as you translate back inboard, uh, the next step is going to be working for the uh, APFR removal. Uh, so when you get into a good position, you're going to work with uh, Koichi and Duke to uh, retrieve that APFR. As you head over to the FSC, uh, give you those cautions again, slow translation, um, wait for any kind of motion to damp out before imparting loads. Uh, we can't simultaneously translate, and that's it. Copy that. Frank, uh, so you're going to loosen the adjustable equipment tether from the uh, the beam so that you've got some play with the, the beam, and then uh, position it into the final stowage location.
Right. So we are six hours, eight and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. I don't know if you need to calm, but I'm going to have to uh, take it calm here for a little bit. Uh, you're good. Okay. And coming back around, that, uh, that safety tether is going above me right now. I think when I came around that uh, A-frame, it just got uh, hooked above me. But I think it's going to be okay. So no rush, but when you get eyes on, or probably when I go uh, past you, it'd be helpful. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually going to need the fan, so it'll work out. If you give me one second, I'm going to work on it now. And again, we're almost six hours, nine and a half minutes into today's spacewalk. The primary objective of the day was to get that new rollout solar array installed, deployed, and integrated uh, into the power system. And we were able to do that successfully. It's uh, now been fully deployed, all the connections made. So at this point, they're going through some of their cleanup steps. Uh, Frank Rubio, he's on the left there. And uh, Frank, so you're going to try to hand start that. Um, there you go. It, it shouldn't overlap the end of the stanchion. Yep. Thank you. So right now, Frank Rubio working to more permanently. So we're looking for two turns on the hand start. Looking to more permanently uh, secure this FSE beam. I think that was closer to three, but be good. Okay, that looks good. And so you'll translate over to Stanchion Bravo um, and do the same with C5. Okay, M2, EVQ. Let's go ahead. Okay. I'm ready for the GCA to the published for the APFR uh, retrieval. Okay, uh, copy that. Uh, this will be um, maneuver to ISS aft for uh, one meter to the published position. Got it. And well. Josh now. And while Frank Rubio secures those beams which were moved out uh, towards the beginning of our spacewalk to clear the way for the IRO, so they're now going to get uh, permanently attached there to the FSC. Meanwhile, Josh Cassett is doing some cleanup work on the robotic arm. Motion. We're hearing the voice now of Koichi Wakata, who's at the mobile workstation inside the station's destiny laboratory right next to, to go. right next to NASA astronaut Nicole Mann, who's at the controls. They're moving the robotic arm closer, Continue. closer to Josh Cassida so he can access that articulating portable foot restraint. Continue additional 20. Additional 20. He's going to be taking that foot restraint off the arm. Three, two, one. And go. Position hold. All right, that's going to work. We will call that GCA complete. Okay. Okay, brakes on. You have a go for APFR removal. Okay, Frank. Uh, saw a good hand start on C5. And Frank, your PGT settings are going to be Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Bravo 7, clockwise 2. Copy. And we're going to stop on turns. You're going to go 20 turns.
and we're watching Frank Rubio once again using that pistol grip tool. He's securing these beams to the FSE, the flight support equipment. This is the temporary pallet that rode up in the trunk of Dragon with the two IROS arrays packed on top. is on here. The jaws are closed, the paddles are out. While he's doing this. And I think I might take care of a couple settings now. Uh, we get there, it's going to be. Yeah, it's Papa, 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 Foxtrot 6. While Rubio is securing these beams, Josh Cassidy is working to get that foot restraint off the end of the robotic arm. We heard call out Papa Papa Foxtrot 6. Those are giving him the yaw, pitch, and roll settings to configure uh, that foot restraint in where. Okay, Frank. And so we're going to change our settings to Bravo 1, clockwise 2, and we'll drive the torque. Does he know that? Seemed like it was uh, pretty close to um, meeting all of Bravo 7, so I have a feeling we may get into the same scenario we had earlier. Yep, copy that. And so we'd like you to go ahead and drive it to torque on Bravo 1. Okay. I'm sorry, uh, Bravo 1. Bravo one, clock, yeah, Bravo one, clockwise two. Okay. Yeah, Bravo one, clockwise two. I've got point one of a turn, green light, eleven decimal mine torque. Copy. That's a good uh, C five. Uh, so if you want to stow your And Frank, once you stow your PGT, we'd like you to do a wiggle test on the bolt. I think the uh, pretty tight. And and we expect that Frank, uh, the turn count wasn't adding up down here. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, the bolt is super solid. The, the actual beam itself has some movement underneath it. Copy, Frank. Stand by. Like I would say it's about uh, two to three millimeters of movement. And copy, Frank. Uh, we're talking it. Okay. And Frank, we are good with Charlie 5, so you're going to translate back over to Charlie 3. Okay, copy. Should I call the uh, adjustable? Affirmative. M2 for the SSRMS. If you're clear of the arm, we can maneuver the arm to the park position. Stand by for one minute, Creechie. I'll get on the seat of Kurt and give you go. Peace. And Josh, when you get over there, it's with three that you're looking for. Copy that.
And in this view, we can see Josh Cassidy. He's got that foot restraint off of the robotic arm. He's going to be attaching that to what's known as the Cedar Cart, the crew, and a Crooklyn translation aid. Safety tether when you can. Okay. Um, not, not at the moment. Okay. But it's, uh... I've got one more bolt to go, and then eventually it walked out. view from Frank Rubio's helmet cam just below him there. Josh Cassidy working to get that foot restraint stored on the CETA cart, the crew equipment and translation aid, having taken it off of the Canada Arm 2 robotic arm that he was riding a little bit earlier in today's spacewalk. If you're just now joining, we had a successful completion. Josh, Frank, uh, just want to uh, check with you guys. We think you're clear of the arm so that uh, Duke and Queechee can move it into its final position. Uh, we are well clear. Okay. Yeah. Assuming they're going to go station forward, correct? Yeah, that's, uh, that's right, uh, Frank. Uh, station forward, uh, one meter. Yeah, you're clear, Queechee. Okay, we'll maneuver to the park position. Thank you. Okay, there's Papa Papa Fox six. And is that gonna make sense? It looks like it is. So I'll get the clock in a six, I'll get out of your way. No worries.
today. We've got a good pull truth test, and we are black on black. And, and Josh, copy uh, the pitch knob check. Now can be depressed. Copy. Thank you. Before I get out of here, you guys are happy with that config, right? You can probably see it in my HECA. Okay, Josh. Uh, so with that uh, uh, ATFR stowed, you'll grab the cable bag, put that on your BRT, and then we'll uh, start heading you back. Josh, that cable bag is just off your right shoulder. And Frank, Josh, we're working through a little bit of blockage. I uh, won't let you know we got your voice, but no video. Good night, thanks. Frank, can you just verify that is uh, that's Papa Papa? Can you make sure that's Fox 6 on it? And I have a good rat on this guy. On the, uh, on the APFR. APFR, I can't really see. From, from this angle. It looks, it looks right, though. I'm ready to the bag. Jaws are closed. Battles are out. I'm going to try to swing it back, maybe without hitting that APFR. And without catching your safety tether, you're good. Alright, let me look at what's going on here. Clear as soon as I cross over from that cross. At least here they will be. I can't see further down. Oh, there we go. Hopefully you're completely clear down there, too.
So right now we are six hours, 29 minutes into today's spacewalk. The primary goal of installing and deploying this new IROSA was done successfully. Uh, we did get a confirmation, if we haven't reported it yet, uh, from the Spartan Flight Controller here in Mission Control Houston uh, that that new IROSA already generating power. All signatures from it look great. Um, so another addition to the power system on board the space station is successfully installed today and connected uh, to continue our upgrades uh, to the power system, eventually adding six of these arrays. This was the fourth out of six. Um, this one augmenting the 4A power channel. So again, that IROSA deployed, integrated successfully already into the station power system. Okay, so you're gonna be Bravo one, clockwise two now, and you're gonna go to torque. Bravo one, clockwise two, go to torque. That's a good read back. This is not gonna work, in fact, uh, Frank. Nick for tethers here, I think I've got a plan. I want to make sure you're on board. Okay, uh, stand by Josh. We'll get this uh, PTT info and, uh, and then we'll chat. And I have two turns, green light, 11 does some light on the torque. Okay, copy Frank, that is a good bolt. Um, so you're good to stow your PTT and uh, retrieve that adjustable. Okay, Josh, uh, we're back with you. Put down my... Okay, so I took down my HECA, hopefully you can see. Not sure how it happened, but we've got this cross right here. Uh, this is... And, and Josh, we're, we're negative on your together. This is my look. So just, just to let you know current config, we've got a good HECA on Frank, uh, but I don't have any video off your HECA. Green light. Uh, I've got two green lights, in fact. And copy that. And we're reestablished, Josh. Okay, Josh, we've got a good view of uh, what's in front of you, and we're ready. You can see this in the heck. I think the best option, I'm not sure how to get out here. I want to make sure we're not get things worse, but I think I disconnect his green hook, and I take my whole path of his green reel. So essentially, stuff this whole thing through. And then if we have a cross. And Josh, uh, copy the plan. And, the, uh, uh, the and we concur. That's a, a good plan. You'll just carry the, the uh, cross all the way back to the airlock, and that'll be fine. Okay, okay sounds good. I'm going to move your green hook a couple times here. Okay, sounds good. And right now, Josh Cassidy just doing a little bit of rearranging on those tethers. Uh, they'll have multiple engaged at any given time just to keep them secure to both the station 
and all the various equipment that they're working on. They have a couple of different safety tethers, equipment tethers, all available to them throughout these spacewalks. But we're largely in the cleanup and ending phase of the spacewalk so far today. Uh, CASA's primary cleanup job was to get the foot restraint off the robotic arm and get it stowed on the CETA cart, the crew equipment in translation assist cart, and he was able to do that successfully. And meanwhile, Frank Rubio is just wrapping up, driving a couple of bolts to secure the uh, FSE beams that had previously been holding the IROSA in place on the equipment pallet um, that it arrived on. Back over to the crew lock bag Tango. And so you're going to end up picking that up. Uh, your choice as to whether you want to uh, stuff those adjustables inside or secure them to your MWS. That's what I was going to do is put them in. Uh, can I put them on the outside? Affirmative. If you want to, you can put them on the external. And then Frank Rubio's final job for cleanup is grabbing some of these adjustable equipment tethers as again as they're working with nice work, Josh. I see it translating back in. As they're working with any equipment on board, they try to keep a tether to them. Make sure we don't have tools or any other items floating away during a spacewalk. And so he's just stowing some of those tethers on the crew lock bag and then Frank will be done with his cleanup steps. We'll start to see the crew make their way back to the airlock to begin the ingress and finishing steps of the spacewalk itself. Again, right now we're six hours, 36 minutes in duration. Things kicked off at 7.19 a.m. Central, 8.19 a.m. Eastern. When they took their suits over to battery power, the clock's going to continue to count until they get inside the airlock, get the hatch closed, and the repressurization of the Quest airlock begins. Once we start to see the pressure tick up, that will be the operational completion of today's spacewalk. Yeah, I was just working this uh, bag. Yeah, my BRT. It's very adjustable. 